All right, we're back for uh, day two of 7DRL streaming. Uh, threw up an image here from that I, I saw yesterday. After the end of the stream, I went back to the 7DRL Discord channel and saw this, which was pretty funny given uh, what had happened there um, in that last run of uh, Co-op Catacombs. <laughs> and left another, a corresponding message uh, there that Mika also saw. Um, um, I had seen theirs, left that message, and I think I guess they went back in and had seen it again uh, later, um, or it was during my stream. But either way, yeah, just uh, you know, <clears throat> roguelikers being friendly, and then interestingly enough, in the uh, in that particular dungeon I was in in that second run, um, shortly I have I had started it and was going through and leaving messages. Lyra, one of uh, Cogmind's uh, frequent players, had started up uh, a run alongside that stream, and you know I'd I'd been we'd been uh, they'd been mentioning what they were doing uh, in chat, and I responded to that a few times. But it turns out that after the stream went back, and they they had actually won their run in that same dungeon already, so. That was cool, and uh, apparently, apparently, later on in that dungeon, you can get a whole bunch of life stuff, which I had never gotten. Um, I never got stuff to restore health, and they got like a ring of regeneration and a potion of life and some good stuff that would have helped. But so that's um, that was interesting to hear, and you know, it's it's been nice to see the uh, the back and forth from different players who are playing that and uh, you know, leaving messages and just saying what they saw. So that's cool to see. Um, but yeah, so that's uh, that was a message from there and uh, today we're going to be starting with I've decided to start today with Pictomancer let's open up Pictomancer boom uh, this game certainly looks pretty um, that's that's one way to get my attention look pretty uh, when I'm going through the games for looking for what to play uh, uh, oh is that there we go it went black is it because it's starting uh, yeah, okay, there it is. Looks like it's loaded automatically there. Um, yeah, when I'm looking for uh, games to play, you know, one of the first thing obviously people are going to look at is what the game looks like. Uh, but that's not all. I mean, honestly, what also attracts me is just a regular ASCII looking game. Because even if it's just looking like regular ASCII, that means the focus is probably on cool mechanics. And that's also very, um, very attractive as well. So when I'm looking through these games for which I want to play... Uh, I'll look at you know the pictures first, but then also go into the description. I like to see a good description of you know what the core mechanic is, what makes this seven DRL unique, what's interesting about it. That's you know is not just your typical uh, basic uh, hack and slash roguelike, right? Because you know seven DRLs a lot of them are about experimentation and seeing what kind of core new core uh, mechanic you can come up with. Um, so yeah, this one both looks interesting and reading the core mechanic, it also seems interesting. So that's a, a double plus for this one. Um, I did actually finish going through the entire list of 70 rolls uh, last night. Uh, I had only done about half of them before. So I've got a f the full list that I will probably be able to stream. Um, that'll happen. I think this is the only, only the other day I'm going to be able to stream this week because i got stuff to do uh, the next couple days uh, this mo in the mornings. So I guess the next stream would be next week. And I will probably only be streaming 70 rolls three times, probably. So that'll make a total of about nine or ten games maybe. Uh, compared to previous years where I did many more, but I've been playing a lot of them. Yesterday, as part of going through all the rest of the games, some of the ones that I wasn't going to stream, I was playing through them, uh, which uh, some of them were kind of interesting. Um, I w just didn't plan on uh, streaming those, though. So uh, let's get started here with Pictomancer. Pictomancer, a game made in one week for the 70 year old 2024. You are Pictomancer. You take pictures of your surrounding world and can then manifest them into the real world. So uh, from what I got from this, you know, and, the, and I like, really like this uh, image here. It looks great. But the, uh, you know, you're, you're taking pictures and kind of, I'm, I'm assuming here, my first assumption would be that you're kind of manipulating the way the, 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 way the map uh, layout works um, by copying and pasting certain areas, something like that. And uh, that's what it feels like. But, um, and it, it, that being the case, I know at least one other person was also working on a, a similar idea of basically um, for the seven DRL. I don't think they finished actually, but uh, where you you know you manipulate your environment, um, it's more it's less about actually you controlling your character alone, but you're actually controlling and manipulating the environment to get the kind of outcome you want, which can be interesting mechanics. So this apparently has a really short run duration, only five ten minutes. Uh, first, we'll be learning the mechanics though, so there's that. Yeah, so you are in an archipelago with the mission of restoring its peacefulness. Indeed, the ancient bell isn't in its altar anymore. Animals, elements, and other spirits are now very hostile to any stranger. Take the bell from inside the volcano into the altar. 
you can find the altar outside the volcano um, uh, defended by dangerous wraiths. All right, so we're trying to get a, a bell from a volcano back to an altar. So we're trying to move something by taking pictures and pasting stuff, I guess. Game is made to be played with mouse only. Drag pictures into the valid range. You can drag the map with the mouse. You can change the zoom with the scroll wheel. You can hover over anything to gain more information. The bottom left log panel is scrollable, mouse drag or scroll wheel. Some keyboard shortcuts are available, but you can't play the game with a keyboard only. So we can use WASD to move space to enter picture taking mode. Tips. Um, uh, mechanical details you might want to play a bit before reading the section as I think understanding mechanics is part of the exploration so yeah I, I agree with that so we're not going to read this bottom section here but checking out tips try to understand how the picture mechanics work you're not a close combat expert at all but you can find other ways to fight you can carry up to seven pictures at once so that seems important seven be aware of your resources taking pictures consumes photolumine which you must find in the wild and your stock is limited okay so that's our, our restriction here on what we can do uh, the game won't let you manifest a picture if it would kill you. <laughs> okay. Some tiles can't be destroyed. For example, one's related to the goal of the game, except with another, in, in other, except with another, other indestructible tiles. Other. Uh, be cautious. It's possible to make the game unwinnable. For example, if you wrote, overwrite every instance of the bell uh, with the pieces of the altar. All right. All right. Okay. So i got a good idea of that. We are going to start here with a... Uh, Full screen, and then uh, did I have that? Here we go. Pictomancer. Boom. There we go. Rearrange that. I did set up a window for that one. <clears throat> hey, Andrew. Hey, Icon. Welcome to the stream. Just getting started here with Pictomancer. All right. Um, so we've got a general idea of how to play. Uh, I, I really like this screen. It looks so cool. Um, high contrast. Uh, oh, um, also the other thing I wanted to point out, I guess, uh, click in here first and see generating world is their font choice. Every year there's at least one seven DRL that uses this font. <laughs> it's, a, it's a cool font. Um, it's uh, pretty popular. Um, uh, it's actually comes from the, it originally comes from the door fortress repository, tile set repository. Uh, it's called, uh, rogue green or Yun would be probably how people would be pronounced it in English, but <clears throat> um, uh, uh, anyway, that's why I read it anyway, because it looks like Chinese, but uh, there's uh, that's a pretty pretty solid, um, nice looking tile set that also works for sci-fi. They didn't use that for the text up here, but they used it for their tiles on here. Okay, so we've got here, action, take a picture. It will consume one pilu, which uh, photo... Uh, uh, Lumine is what it was. Uh, they've certain shortened it to Pilu or Pilu. Pilu, we'll call it Pilu. Um, wait a turn. Hold down to wait multiple turns. Uh, times one. Click one to reset the zoom. Okay, click that. Okay. Center the map on yourself. So we can move around the map here. Drag that. Okay, all right. And yeah, you can see our log out to the left there. Uh, Icon says you play this. It's a really fun idea for Royal. Like, yeah, it looks neat. Uh, it looks like a neat concept. Definitely something I wanted to try. And here's our zoom going. Okay, whoa. Okay, that's as far as we can go out. There we go there. That's our own area. And we can see here it's uh, labeling the things on the left there. What we're looking at. Oh, there it is. Look at that. Mine it up. Photolumine vein. Source of pictolumine. Oh, it's pictolumine. Wait, did, did they change the name of that? Or did I just read it wrong? Wasn't it called photolumine on the main itch page? <laughs> now it's called picto. No wonder it's P.I. Lua. Maybe they didn't change the name on their itch page. Interact to harvest it. Warning. Explodes when manifested. Huh. Oh, right. That's so that you can't, like, copy and recreate it somewhere or something like that. However that works. Center the map on yourself. Okay, so click on that. See how that works. Okay. Animated. Like, what is this over here? Pictolumine ore. Source of Pictolumine. Interact to harvest it. Okay, so let's, I guess, oh, we are at 10 out of 10 right now, though, so... Um, so I guess that means we don't actually need to harvest any. What happens if we try to? Plus one, and we basically wasted it, it looks like. You gathered pictolumine, and we're still at 10, so that's just basically just a waste. All right, take a picture. Um, take a picture, how does this work? Okay, so you can take a picture within this box, apparently. So, to get off this island, I'm assuming we have to put some land over here. Just to guess. Uh, we don't want to probably pick this up because it'll blow up in our face. But we can pick up, for example, maybe this. Take a picture there. Ah, there it is. Picture. <laughs> Drag to manifest it into the world. Okay, and that took nine. All right, so we have nine out of ten. We got one left here. So we can now put this. Yeah, this, so this works. 
kind of how you assume it would work, apparently. All right, that's good. Let's uh, go pick up one of these uh, so that we can max out again and we can leave our little island, which has a nice collection of research. I like the uh, the animation is nice. The uh, sm You can see the FOV edge smoothing there. Oh, what's that? A hostile. A bunny. It's a hostile bunny. <laughs> okay. So we have 100 HP. I guess I should check how much we can actually attack. We're basically just exploring the mechanics initially. Something blocks your path. Right. Yeah. Well, deep water. Okay. So did we get attacked? Not yet. Hostile bunny. So if I click on this bunny, yeah, we each lose one hit point. All right. So we killed the bunny. I probably could have killed it some other way. I don't know. By or just moved it far away. But uh, can you take a selfie and clone yourself? Uh, I imagine not. Um, take a picture of ourself. I don't think this game. We're in the picture. Oh, maybe it's not cloning. Maybe you're moving yourself. All right, we can't actually place a picture that far away, though. Okay, so, yeah, that's... But we can place one over... I mean, we're just experimenting anyway. Oh, wait, okay, so it won't... We can't... Oh, okay, so then, oh, yeah, the entire edge has to be inside. All right, that makes sense. So yeah, this should move us, apparently. That would be my guess. Also, we could try to dig ourselves into the wall here. Boom. Yep, that moves us. That's a way to move. Whoa, there's a bunch of more alumine in here, too. So we can grab this off the edge there. Yep, grab it right off the edge. Nice. <laughs> okay, so this is a way for us to teleport. Yeah, so it doesn't clone you, it moves you. Here's the inside of the volcano. There's a bunny over there. Did we regain a hit point? Or did, oh, we only lost one, I guess. Yeah, because we killed the bunny, so we lose one from that. Um, just guess, so just looking around this island real quick. But, um, yeah, I think the animation speed is uh, pretty good on this. Gonna kill this last bunny here. I'm just doing it with hit points for now, rather than trying to do some weird photo stuff. Let's uh, see. All right, I was wondering if this was this is not the volcano, so we don't know how exactly how big the land is. Uh, we have one attack. Oh, what's that? Okay, that's a wraith. Slow but very dangerous spirit. It can go through anything and will kill any living being it passes through. It is protecting the altar. It won't chase too far away from it. Okay, this is the altar part. Wait, altar? There's the ground. Altar part. Part of the altar, which shall receive the bell. It is indestructible. Okay, so we found our altar thing here. Hey, Luigi. Oh, you're going to stream. I forgot to stream tonight. Yeah. Yeah, welcome to, welcome to relax. We are relaxing, taking pictures of this uh, nice-looking ASCII world here. Um, this does seem to be a rather relaxing and fun game. Uh, okay, so now we got to find the volcano. Here's more bunnies. Oh, shoot. I, that was my mistake. I stepped to the wrong location. Um, a lot of bunnies out here. Oh, yeah, you can wait, too. Right. Oh, I forget the key for wait, but it's okay. We'll just use the mouse for now. Just gonna wait for this bunny. Probably could have stepped back. Would have saved us a little bit of health. But also, you know, we could be using the probably... Actually, there's so much photo lumine. We probably should be using our picture-taking abilities to deal with some of this stuff. Also, you can practice with that, right? Take a picture of this bunny. Hey, a picture of bunny. Here we go. Let's uh, do like that. Now the bunny is... Oh, no, wait. That just copies the bunny, though. It doesn't actually move the bunny. Oh, no, wait. But it'll move the bunny as soon as I put the bunny out here. Hey, bunny. Welcome to... Oh, whoa, what? <laughs> Did he just... Oh, can you, oh, it's shallow water. You can walk in the shallow water. Uh, okay, we did clone the bunny. <laughs> you don't move the bunny. You yourself teleport by via pictures, but the bunnies do not. <laughs> it's not a poor bunny. Uh, it made it across the shallow water. Hey, wait. Okay, whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, the game actually stopped for a second there. Huh. It's kind of weird. Didn't expect that. I tried to move over there, and, and it stopped. Anyway... Uh, yeah, cool mechanic. Um, I like this. So I'd like to move over there, but I don't think we can manage that. Uh, but it does, it copies the bunny though. Hmm. I wonder how we can use this as an attack then. Does that mean we have to get, are there certain enemies that might attack each other? I guess there's the wraiths that we know. They, it says they'll kill anything they pass through. Let's grab some more of this uh, photo lumine here. And, uh, but yeah, for now, 
just killing bunnies the good old-fashioned way. It seems we clone them, so... All right, this looks like just a picto lumine mine. Hey, Pagels! Oh, shoot, I didn't notice. There's something else here. A fire elemental. Immune to fire. Surely it has a weakness. Uh, yeah, I would imagine that would be water. Um, let's... What if we go over here and just walk across the water? Is it not going to follow us? Yeah, he's not following us. All right, fire elemental will not follow us across water. But he's going to try to chase us down. Uh, so yeah, you could we could stick this guy on an island more easily. The bunny was a test anyway. I'd put it. I could have put the bunny further away, and it wouldn't have been able to get to land. So, oh no, but it, yeah, that's right. It doesn't teleport. It's just gonna make a copy, huh? So we can't use. It doesn't seem like we can use that as an attack. Really, I thought it'd be, it would also enable us to move things, but that might make things a little too easy. Well, we'll find out what other kind of strate uh, strategies uh, there are with this. Okay, so there's lots of bunnies out here. Haven't found the volcano yet. Oh, this guy's fast. Hmm. All right. Oh, I think I see a volcano. Few things can survive in it. Oh, lava. Uh, so we can copy... Oh, we can co probably copy water on top of this guy. That's what we need to do. All right, so does taking a picture take a turn? Let's, uh, let's find out. Uh, oh, what if I copy deep water onto something? Here we go. All right, taking a picture does not take a turn. Here, let's drop some water right there. Oh, yeah, you're dead. <laughs> that does work. All right. So what we don't, we don't want to copy bunnies elsewhere. We want to drop, what if we, we need to drop deep water on these. Drop all these bunnies into some deep water. <laughs> I can see how you can totally make your game uh, unwinnable here through picture taking shenanigans. Uh, let's go north one space here. Take a picture of some deep water and drown the bunnies. Oh my God, look at that. They just drowned. <laughs> That's awesome. I like how they faded. <laughs> uh, yeah, Andrew, uh, it's your comment. I, it's, uh, exactly. Uh, even just shallow water is good enough for the, that. But with the others, just deep water uh, and just drown them. That's that's really cool. Okay, so you can't move other things. You want to use the terrain against them. Don't don't try to. You can't move other things, right? Uh, so we've got that. Uh, just need to make sure we have enough of this photo lumine in reserve. All right, we can't actually move through trees. Okay. Oh shoot. You know what I need to do is not get too far away from water. All right. Yep. Yep. Hello there, dude. Oh. Uh oh. More bunnies. The bunnies approach. Grab some more of this and let's head over inside here. We're getting closer to lava, which I guess means volcano, which means target. Mm, so bunnies, another fire elemental to the south. I'm going to head northeast here. Can you keep multiple photos? Yeah, we can actually. In fact, that's a good idea. I hadn't actually started to prepare for that. We'll probably need to bring, for example, water. You can. It says on the page you can have seven pictures at once. Uh, so... That'll be useful. A um, couple elementals coming out of here. We'll definitely need to be bringing some water with us into the volcano, I can imagine. Go st we're going to stockpile pictures. First, right now, this run, we're just kind of learning the mechanics, how everything works here. Oh, a lot of fire elementals coming. So we won't be able to get all three with this, but... Um, Goodbye. <laughs> Actually, though, now you can take a picture of this same thing and move it even, huh? This is shallow water, so we can move across it. Like, like pick up this entire thing and clone that over here. Right, that's regular ground, so... Whoops. God damn it. Why did that not work? I accidentally messed up, and then when I, I let go, it moved. So, that's bad. Anyway, just learning the mechanics. Gotta be careful with this. I should probably be... I'm, I'm not gonna move. I'm gonna move with the keyboard now. It'll be easier. There we go. Oh, but, we, uh, but I can move diagonally with the keyboard? Yes, I can. Okay, there we go. Seven pictures of mass destruction, basically. A lot of bunnies coming from the north again. I mean, it seems like what you would want to do then is store up some pictures. Just the right pictures. And then uh, also... And then also go mining to so that you can take more pictures again, right? So let's take uh, take some pictures here. 
uh, take a picture with water on the bottom, take a picture with water on the deep water. Make, actually, deep water could be dangerous. Um, it's good for killing bunnies, but with fire elementals, like you don't want to do that. You want to use shallow water because you can walk through that, but they can't. Oh, shoot. Oh, shoot. <laughs> Pressing escape does not work in these games. How do I get out of photo mode? I know, he's clicking there. Yeah, anyway, I'm going to take some pictures of shallow water here because it's safe for us, but not for them. I wonder if there's even a reason to take pictures of non-watery things. There might, I don't know how, how much they thought about other balance aspects of this. We shall see. I'm going to take some of these. Now we're going to go up north. And uh, actually, I'm going to go west. I was going to go mine. Actually, no, let's go back down here to mine. Oh, okay, it uses the S key for down. All right, well, we killed the stuff down here, so unless things respawn, it's actually it's relatively safe. Oh, we can't even get to this mine unless you create a path. We can do that. Like this, then go south here and... Oh, that'll explode. There we go. That's helpful. Could have been better. There we go. Although technically I was supposed to open them all with that, but I did not. So this is a trade here. Basically one picture will trade us. Uh, we can move over to here. And it's a one for three trade. Pictures of lava probably useful. Yeah, also same thing as deep water, I assume, for dropping on. I, I haven't seen any enemies yet, but might as well take one. Yeah, let's take a picture of lava for some kind of use. So we've got one, two, three, four. All right, you can see, um, I guess it doesn't count them for us, but once you get used to it, you can see that the, the picture height on the right will be about full. That's where you can tell you're full of pictures. It's seven total, and uh, right now you can see we have uh, six, so we can have up to one more picture. Let's go grab some more. <clears throat> Picto lumine here. Max out. And then head east because it looks like the lavas come from the east, so I assume that's where the volcano is. And here comes a bunny. I wonder if actually I should be uh, saving some health. Whoops, no, wrong button. I was going to press the wait button there. Saving some health for uh, something much more dangerous later. It's possible. Optimally, it does seem like, though, there is enough Pictolumine to take out bunnies using that as well, kind of gather them together. Oh, hello there. There, you're dead. Okay, another fire elemental down there. Don't want to produce, well, I was going to say don't want to produce too much deep water, but okay, what is this? Oh, is this it? It's our target, the bell. Okay, you need to bring back to the altar. It has the power to banish spirits when hit. It is indestructible. Okay, so we just need to grab this then, and that's that's it. A lot of fire. I wonder if, do I want, f I guess, having f lava on the edge is okay. I probably want to move closer to that and get it on the top left, because we're coming from the bottom right when it comes to the altar. Hmm. Right, so we have a photo of the bell. So we just stick the bell in the middle, and then that would be it. <clears throat> mm K. 
Okay, so it was uh, back over here, already being chased. Oh, whoops. Having trouble. Uh, with the left side, using the left side as an umpad here. All right, fine, bunny. I'll take you out. Come over here. One hit point for one bunny. All right, so the, wait. Oh, that's right, you can zoom out too. There it was, okay. All right, so let's head uh, over here to the other side. Don't know how these, how, that's a lot of wraiths. Huh. I wonder if we can kill wraiths with lava, actually. Uh, ooh. Death touch. Slow, but very dangerous. All right, we'll see how close they want to get. Do they not like deep water even, or is it just a distance thing or what? Guess we'll find out. Oops. I'm not close enough to get him with lava yet. Okay, yeah, he's coming this way now. Let's see what this does to him. Probably nothing. Hmm. Okay, and yeah, he doesn't care about that. <laughs> hmm. All right, so, oh, another good dangerous thing, I guess you don't want to take photos of wraiths because that would just make more of them. <laughs> so we need a way across, and then we also need to get across uh, safely. I'd say um, just need to build a bridge first and then be... Uh, is he still going to come this way or no? And then teleport across. This looks like a bad spot to get pictures, though. All right, he doesn't look like he wants to come any further than that, so that's good. All right, let's get some land pictures. Uh, just land. More land. Go through anything. Okay, so yeah, like you can't even use trees or walls or anything to stop them, I guess. Yeah, I mean, he's in a wall right now. So yeah, nothing to stop them. Having a photo of yourself, right? Oh, oh, that's right. I mean, we can take that to begin with. That's what I was planning on: is uh, taking the photo of ourself to teleport with. Oh shoot! Actually, oh, that's what I get with these. Okay, that's double teleport. I didn't realize I was even in, in range for those. Let's get some that are don't not with us in it there. <laughs> Me and the picture there. But yeah, we can make a bridge and then also walk out on the bridge and then just teleport to where we need to go and then drop this. That should theoretically be the solution. But now the rates are actually kind of hanging out on this side, which I guess is not good. They don't want to come any further, though. Hmm. Just make a little wider area to move through, and then... Let's see, I'm going to take another picture with us in the bottom right corner. <laughs> it does seem like, yeah, if you've got enough pictures of yourself, you can start teleporting all over. Is this a roguelike take on a viewfinder? Good question. Uh, I don't know what that is. Actually, one second, before I, f I forgot, let me see, one second. Let me drop the link in there for anyone else who wants to try it out. Uh, drop the link in chat there of the actual uh, of this 70 year old that we're playing right now big dumb answer all right so we now have uh, photos of ourselves here um and it's useful that you can scroll over these or mouse over these and also get this uh now i assume this goes the bell goes in the middle right there's a part of the altar which will receive the bell we're not like sticking it we I, I assume we're putting it in the middle and not as in doesn't have to do with these this altar part uh so yeah that's our assumption, and we're going to now, I guess, move forward. Try this out. Um, oops, I need to click back in here. Back in the window. Hey there, Wraiths. How you doing? Don't kill me. Let's see how quickly they move over here. That's a little kind of... Not far enough. I would prefer myself to be on the left side, which means maybe I should take another picture real quick. 
take a picture with us on the left side and then really would be close enough either way though picture okay there we go boom and then I'm gonna be in the lava aren't I now is this deep water? Shoot, <laughs> a little close here. Okay, that's not deep water. There's only two deep water cells, and they're on the left of us. So this should be ground, and this should work. Boom. Victory. Okay, that was cool. Not especially hard. I mean, we won the first run, but it's a cool idea, right? And it looks cool. I like it. <laughs> you managed to put the bell where it belongs, and the nature went back to its peacefulness. Victory. Hmm. Pictomancer. Yeah, it's a... A really neat concept. Um, I can. I wonder how much more you could do with it, though it's uh, probably tough to do a lot with this particular concept. But I don't know. Depends. Could still get creative, more creative. I don't know if the developer intends to take this one further. It's already, mm, yeah, definitely a, a good uh, seven DRL sized, uh, fun little thing to play, though, for sure. Um, I don't think there's anything else new to explore in it either. Con Congratulations. <laughs> um, uh, oops. Uh, tile adjacency stuff like fire and gases could be neat. Yeah. Uh, other kinds of things that you mix to make it more complex, more complex reactions, environmental reactions. So far, it looks like, yeah, we basically have, you know, you can use water against fire elementals. There's only, it looked like there was only three enemies out there, three enemy types. And uh, you can use, you know, you can drop deep water on things. You can teleport yourself. What are they, you know, you got to think of what kind of abilities are drawn from this uh, particular mechanic. And, oh, yeah, okay, you can see the picture there. And at the end, we can see our altar in the middle. So, yes, that was definitely the goal. Um, fortunately, that lava was just a little to the to the side in my picture. Otherwise, we would have had to move again. But it wasn't too big of a deal, considering we had already had multiple extra pictures. But there's a lot of resources here. We weren't constrained for resources, that's for sure. So it seems more like less, you know, it's certainly not designed as to, to be an extremely challenging 7 DRL, more of a explore this cool, fun mechanic and enjoy type of thing. So yes, Con uh, contrag contragulations. <laughs> um, oh, uh, yeah, one second. You can, you d to share a link, one second, I'll have to add uh, one second here. I'd have to uh, add permission here. One second. All right, you should be able to share a link. <clears throat> Viewfinder. Is there another? So there's like a full game that's uh, kind of like this. I'm. Viewfinder, uh, challenge perception, redefine reality, reshape the world around you with instant camera. Mm. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've seen actually this, even this mechanic in uh, a couple of games before. Um, never in, an, in a 7 DRL, I don't think, though. So it's nice to see. Uh, it's nice to see that explored here. But uh, yeah, looks uh, looks interesting. A 3D version, even. Huh. <laughs> cool. Yeah, I wonder if they've played it before. I mean,. Uh, you know, sometimes that's happened, and uh, sometimes people have never heard of the games that are, are somewhat related to their own. Uh, immediately what you thought of, yeah. Hmm, maybe. Um, <clears throat> didn't have the dev on today. It's his dev, actually, I think they've made a number of 7 DRLs in the past. Um, I don't know if, I don't think they're in the 7 DRL Discord, though, the channel. Yeah, that's... Uh, Another take on that. So congratulations. Then where does it take us back to the uh, main menu here? Or where? It's black. Okay, there we are. It does eventually take us back to the main menu. Um, yeah, dressed in. They've made some 70 year olds in the past, as I recall. Cool, though. Uh, but yeah, looking at the pictures here and the samples, it doesn't look like there was anything else. So it's pretty simple in terms of content. Um, something to try out and experiment with uh, on your own if you want to play that as well. But uh, yeah, definitely worth uh, worth that run to see how that uh, the mechanics work. Would like to see more content. Whoops, generating world. Don't need to generate the world necessarily. I clicked on that. 
But uh, yeah, that was cool. Uh, I think we're going to... That'll be enough for Pictomancer then. Shorter game. Let me uh, switch back. And the next game we're going to move on to then. We're already going to go to Electric Organ. Wanted to start off. It looked like it was going to be a shorter game overall. That's why I decided to start with it. It's just a, a prettier, uh, a simpler looking, uh, quicker game to start off with for the stream. This next one looks less so. Um, it looks more complicated and uh, it's also ASCII. Uh, let's see. Um, but it caught my attention. I've seen it mentioned in a couple places. Um, also kind of funny. Oh, we'll get to it in a bit here and we'll go over the mechanics. But here we go. So this is Electric Organ. I will drop a link specifically to this page there in the chat. And um, a corruption is taking over Retro Future City and only you can stop it. Descend through four levels of intense turn-based combat and cybernetically enhance your organs to overcome this threat. Electric Organ is a traditional roguelike with an emphasis on ranged combat. Character progression primarily takes the form of swapping out your organs as they are damaged by the environment and upgrading them to make you make you uh, strong enough to face the threats below the city. In addition to the game's levels, all the music and sound effects are procedurally generated live with a synthesizer. Okay, so um, it, when I read the description, just based on the description, it actually sounded kind of like Cogmind. <laughs> um, emphasis on ranged combat, swapping out your organs as they're damaged by the environment and upgrading them <laughs> as you go. It's uh, kind of similar. I actually saw uh, several uh, Cogmind likes in this year's among this year's 70 URLs after going through all of them. Or, I mean, not necessarily were they directly uh, inspired, but um, and at least one did list Cogmind as an inspiration. Uh, this one in particular does not, but this is, so this is what it looks like. Uh, the pictures here it looks pretty cool and uh yeah it looks uh you see here you go choosing an organ to buy so you're just yeah basically working on uh upgrading yourself and uh, taking damage from the environment so let's uh let's see all right what am i gonna run this I'm running this from download download open game capture okay so let's i am going i'm playing the downloaded version here performance reasons let me run the game Complicated and ASCII, never a bad combo. Yeah. All right. This one also has audio. Again, synthesizer. Let me synthesizer. Let me know if uh, the audio is too low or high on the background. There it looks like the audio level might be okay um, compared to me. Actually, let me lower it a bit for me here. There we go. Okay. All right, and um, let me switch to, is it going to capture this correctly? Maybe, maybe not. It's not capturing correctly. Why does it never do that? I'm not used to using game capture. Oh, no, it looks like it should be. What? Sorry, let me let me just mess with OBS again. Uh, weird. Specific window. It's not capturing it for some reason. Why are you not capturing the window? It did before when I was testing this. Oh, that was funny. It made a little buzz when I uh, clicked and held the window because <laughs> it stopped. Yeah, when you hold the window title bar. I mean, that's normal for games. I don't know why it's not capturing the window, though. Uh, Damn it. All right, well, I can... No, nope, I can't full screen and get it that way. Uh, maybe I'll have to switch methods here. Uh, one second. Hmm. Weird. Yeah, I can't get this to turn on, so I'm going to have to create a separate window here for this. One moment. It had... Anyway, it should have worked. I will uh, just blow this up for you. Bottom of the window is there. Oh, okay, that's lower than I thought it was. Shoot. Again, I will try not to move the window. Sorry. I had run this once and set it up for game capture and it worked fine. Now it's not working for some reason. Uh, 
I don't actually have a good method of doing this. Uh, we're pretty close here. Mm. Alright, that looks like it'll be good enough. No, it should be a little smaller. There we go. Okay. Oh, it's also got that bar on the right, but that's okay. Alright. We're using Pictomancer window here. Okay. <laughs> Windows window problem. I have no idea what's up with that. What's that's so weird. Anyway, I'm not used to using game capture, actually. This is the first time I've done that. I normally use display capture and set things up that way. Uh, but I tried, decided to try out game capture this time for the first time ever. Maybe I should use like some other kind of window capture. It would be more stable or something. I don't know. Anyway. Oh, uh, now I know not to rely on that. Okay, so our game is Electric Organ. It looks like we're going to get our help from inside rather than in the uh, game there. Um, in the uh, itch uh, window. Uh, oh, there is a help here. So, H for help. Wait a minute, what? What? No, I've lost control of the game. I can't actually do anything in the game. What? <laughs> the game has stopped responding. And it clashed. What? <laughs> okay, let me open the game again. Maybe it didn't like me dragging the window. Mm. Yeah, it didn't. Oh, wow, that crashes this bad. Oh, screw that. Okay, we're going to run the game in the browser. <laughs> uh, this will be different, apparently. Is it going to work? Press any key to begin. Shoot, now i got to restart this. All right, there you go. Boom. Is that all aligned? Not quite. Hmm. Sorry for the uh, slow start here. Press any key to begin. Oh, now it's in the corner. <laughs> okay, so maybe I can use the other window. Um, sheesh. Uh, That's going to be annoying <laughs> if it's over there, too. <laughs> Crap. Uh, how can I solve this? I could move this. I just don't want Hopefully the game will continue working, too, once I'm done with it. See, that, that probably broke the game. Oh, yeah, that breaks the game, too. Shoot. All right. Sorry for the troubles here. Oh my. It looks like an interesting game though, so I do want to try it. I don't want to skip over it. <laughs> Alright, I have a new idea. Hmm, new idea didn't work either. <sighs> Alright, I think I'm getting closer to another new idea. This might work. <laughs> Let me check that out. All right, that's looking like it's actually uh, appearing correctly over there, so there. Now, is this broken or not? Can I interact with the game? Nope, can't interact with the game. One more try. What? Now I'm actually in game. Oh man, what the? Shoot, I'm gonna have to skip this game if it's gonna keep doing this. Oh well, might have to skip this game because I can't get it captured. Yep, okay, I guess we're gonna have to skip it. Shoot, all right, we're skipping this game. Uh, I'll have to try to get it reliably working earlier. It was working before. 
um, when I first tested it just to get it running for the stream. Let me delete a bunch of stuff I made here. Too bad. All right, then. We're not playing Electric Organ. I will try to get that reliably running, I guess, for another time. We're going to skip to... Is Drew around? Um, I don't know if he's in the chat here or not. Don't be sorry, Cogman is telling me the patience. <laughs> Tell me to have the patience of a god. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, just, uh, it's kind of annoying. Don't like to do that during the stream. Waste time on that stuff. But it's weird that it was working fine. And then for some reason it doesn't work. No matter how many other methods I try there. It kept dying when I'd get back to the game itself. It then wouldn't, it was unresponsive. So. Hmm. Anyway, uh, so let me see. Is I was gonna because I didn't tell him I was gonna play it today. Uh, is Drew around? Drew, Drew, Drew is Drew. Drew is around. One second. I'm sorry. I'm checking the chat right now to see if Drew's around. Because I was actually good planning on playing his game, but it wasn't planned for today. But I'm going to move it up to today. Uh, runner. Anyway, probably started even if they're not around. But... Alright. Just left a message for them. As the dev of the game we're going to play, which is instead going to be Runner. Uh, right here. Boom. Runner. And I actually set up a window for this uh, last night, and then this morning I saw that they had added uh, full screen support, which means my window on this will actually be wrong, but boom. Okay. Actually, let me reset that because I need to read the page real quick. So, you enter the data vault. A single memory stick lies on the floor. Amulet dot dat. <laughs> you shove it into your uh, bag and race for the elevator in front of you. The lights turn red, and you see a hunter bot emerge behind you. Lasers scanning the room. You dive into the elevator, hoping you can find your way back through the sub-basement of the Megacorp Tower before it catches up with you. Runner is a non-combat, movement-oriented roguelike. So, I like movement-oriented roguelikes for 7DRL. There's been a lot of really good ones in the past. It's, again, you know, with 7DRL, you want to focus on your core mechanic and do it well. And movement is a... a pretty cool way to do that you know you have all kinds of neat things in the environment and so it's just all about moving moving through that environment i've seen a lot of cool different one ideas you know with all kinds of um, momentum based uh, various momentum based ones racing based ones uh, portal based ones all kinds of stuff so this one is another in that vein we're going to see how they've implemented their mechanics so you have your prize already you just need to get out with it alive you can't fight any of your enemies but you can avoid them with skillful use of your more than human uh, movement abilities to run along walls jump over enemies and burrow out of a dead end you'll win if you can manage to stay ahead of the pursuing hunter bot through three levels so use the numpad or keyboard for basic eight-way directional movement all right spacebar weights in keyboard mode both s and x move down all right so i'll be using numpad and spacebar to wait i guess unless i guess five would work for that um whoops switch back to chat here uh, activate special moves. Special moves using the num, the num uh, we got one through six, uh, the non numpad number keys. Select a special move by choosing its number, then valid destination using the move are shown on the map. Enter a symbol, it defaults to moves. Uh, you can exit special move mode by hitting escape. Escape, is that really gonna work in this? Um, <clears throat> considering full screen mode, or any normal eight way movement key. Special moves go on cooldown. Okay, when they're on cooldown, they turn red. Okay, so the red in this list here will be cooldown. Um, and they could be turn less red as they cool down. I guess it's unfortunate there's no number time anymore, but we'll see whether that matters or not. So wait again. Pass a turn, letting bots move. Um, open or close adjacent doors. Okay, so if we're waiting, we can use it to open and close doors or activate buttons. Ah, so it's also an activation thing. All right, activate a pulse, showing you the distance to the hunter. All right, so I get it does it to all these things too at the same time. So we get to see a hunter whenever we do that or not. It does this first and then that. We'll see. Activate the buttons on uh, the three buttons on each level by waiting next to them one time. Then make your way to the exit. Okay, so each level we have to hit a few spots and then can exit exit three levels without running out of health and you win. Okay, so there's three buttons on three levels. 
use your special abilities as often as these are the tips uh, special abilities as often as you can it makes sense especially since they're on cooldown and i guess unlimited beyond that actively create situations to use them especially the long distance moves right save time want to get ahead of this hunter thing uh move running jump is an important constraint you need three spaces open in front of you with enemy open in front of you with enemy vision to use it if you use it and there's vision on any of the charge up spaces you'll get shot Does this mean no enemy vision? Uh, in front of you with enemy vision, meaning no enemy vision probably? Because it's going to run in f through three spaces or something? Hmm. We'll see. Uh, any, uh, hold on to six burrow to get for a get out of jail free card. It's a very long cooldown. And you will probably only be able to use it once per level. Right? Going through stuff. Don't be afraid of taking damage sometimes. I've never seen a complete run with no health loss. Uh, all right. Uh, you take damage when you actively move into a cell that has enemy vision. If they move into a range of you after you move, you will not take damage. But it will be hard to plot. All right, then it may be hard to plot a move out of the vision. Okay, so you don't want to move into, but uh, yeah, you can let them uh, have sight of you for a second. Don't forget the jump off the wall is criminally underused. <laughs> you have to have a wall behind you. Redacted new techniques. Okay, map explorer. Don't hit M. All right, inspirations. Cogmind, yay! <laughs> Especially for animations and level generation. Oh, that's interesting. Generally, it's just really interesting moving movement dynamics, non fantasy any setting. Into the breach. Predi uh, right, the idea of predictable enemies that telegraph what they will do. Yeah, one of the games that I first games that I saw a long time ago that I thought did that really well, which I still haven't streamed, but I really want to stream. I had been waiting for them to kind of like finish it, but they left it in early access for a long time. Is uh, shoot, what's it called? Starts with an F. Uh, I even forgot the name. I could find. It pretty quickly uh, I forgot the name of it now uh, it's in the back of my mind it's, and it's on my streaming list I'm going to stream it one day it's very cool though it has telegraph mechanics and uh, a lot of neat ideas in it um, let's see invisible ink uh, right for the idea of mainly working around enemies to get things done and the broglex pared down designs with depth to them right this is definitely this is not a broglex we can tell but okay um, alright let's uh Anything else here? Official 70 year version is here. Okay, so we're playing the newer version, which is what we want to be playing. Uh, so, I uh, guess I will need, now that this can be full screen, I'll set up a window. A cyberpunk escape roguelike by Drew Harry. Here we go. I guess this is the hunter here, and that's you. Press any key to play. T to begin tutorial. Oh, okay, we'll probably want to play a tutorial. But now there's also a full screen mode, so I'm going to have to set that up. I originally had a window for the non-full screen mode, but we might as well play this one. Uh, but, shoot, what do I have here? Display. Gonna have to resize this now. So, bear with me for yet another moment. Um, I just need to start small here so I can actually see what's going on. There we go. All right, that should be good once I turn the other one off. Boom, okay, now we have a new one for runner. Lock that, okay. Yeah, originally there was no full screen mode for this. This is gonna look better though, probably, uh, using the game's full, sc a full screen mode rather than uh, being upscaled by OBS, which is what I had set it up for originally. Um, have you seen, Pagel's asking, have you seen Quasimorph yet? More or less newish role like exploded in popularity a couple months ago. Um, yeah, I mean, it's been around for quite a long time now. Uh, Quasimorph, I haven't actually played it yet. Pe most people seem to think it was not, most people, in, at least that I saw in the traditional role like community, didn't seem to think a whole lot of it yet. Um, I'm sure, but from what, just from what it looked like when it was first released, you could tell it would be one of the more popular types of mainstreamish roguelikes. Uh, I mean, considering the graphics and all, um, those, it's pretty easy for games like that to get more popular. So as long as they got some decent mechanics behind it, but the, I don't know, the traditional roguelike community didn't seem to really be all about that, but probably more getting into it. I know they've been improving it. They'd stopped developing it for a while, actually. All right. So. Back to this year, uh, T, boom. Okay, I'm going into the tutorial so that we can learn how these things work. H, I guess that's a hunter type thing. And uh, let me make sure, yeah, okay, so our screen is properly aligned here. Andrew K says this one is cool. Yeah, I saw a bunch of people playing this in um, in uh, the 7DRL uh, channel on the Roguelikes, uh, Roguelikes server. 
Okay, can move with numpad. All right, I have to turn on actual numlock to move with numpad. Uh, welcome, runner. I see you can move at least. Okay, yeah. Proceed through the door. Press num5 or spacebar to wait next to the door to open it or bump into it if you prefer. All right. I, all right. Even waiting next to it when it works as well. You can do it from an angle. All right. Close that door behind you. What kind of runner leaves open doors behind them? Oh, okay. Is that so? What if I do it here? All right. Open there. We can open from there. We can move through. Bumping works. Okay. Yeah. So you can. You can open and close from adjacent positions, and you can also just bump right through. Patrol bot ahead. If you move into its vision, it'll shoot you. Use num5 or spacebar to wait for an opportune moment to run past. Okay. All right, so that's how patrol bots work. All right. Yeah, so you have just enough time to get by. X. Walk up to the sentry vision and stand on an X. Um... Mm -hmm. and uh, press 1, then select a dire direction to jump. Another jump ability here. Press 1, uh, select to jump. So 4, 6 means I press the numbers to jump there, or do I press a direction? Perhaps a number, but... Uh, direction. I used a direction, and that worked. Ah! Oh, okay. Hey, Drew. Welcome to the stream. Yeah, I, I saw you. Yeah, dropped a, a chat or not too long ago. So you might be able to show up. I wasn't gonna. I was gonna play Runner later on in, in the next stream, um, but um, one of the other games wasn't. I couldn't stream it, so I moved Runner up to today. So I'm glad you could show up then. I just got in here. We're doing the tutorial real quick. Um, so far, pretty good. Uh, I like uh, like the fact that there is a tutorial and it seems like a, a well done one for just teaching all your individual abilities. One century is nothing. This is more common in the field. Uh, use wall run to get past them. Okay, this is ability two. So there's an X, and apparently we want to stand on the X. Wall run. Okay, so if I press... Uh, so we can see our jump up there is on cooldown. Wall run. And okay, so we can run along the wall for... So I guess it's always going to be four spaces then. And now we can do... And so we can... What if I hit six here? Okay, that, that didn't actually work. Uh, so... So, wall run, four, six. Oh, is it saying four, six because I'm like using numpad and the six is to the right? I guess that's what it's doing. It's not the actual number six. Anyway, I mean, that's what I did earlier. Just uh, wasn't sure what that meant for sure. Here we go. Back through here. And so we can say, oh, so, oh, okay. So now uh, from reading the itch page, I thought the color would actually fade or something, but it's actually, you can see the cool down, counting down by get the, the red getting, the red bar getting shorter. All right. I thought it would meant fade or something. All right. So we're over here and it hasn't told us what to do, but I'm going to jump off the wall. There we go. Or did I, or did and I wasn't paying attention because I was looking at something else. Nominal performance, let's try your moves for getting out of a jam. Okay, so that was jumping off of a wall. Had to have a wall behind the position you want to move away from. And that moves a uh, whole one, uh, five spaces there. Okay. Uh, chase into a dead end, use burrow to dig th through the wall east. Okay, burrow. And it goes through one wall. Hmm, and it becomes a door, really. Okay. So it doesn't become a door. It does become a door. Oops. Ah, oh, I was pressing the wrong button there. Yeah, whoops. I was pressing C for some reason. <laughs> Having played a bunch of door opening and closing uh, roguelikes lately. Yeah, so it does become basically a door then. All right, that's interesting. Door opening and closing simulators. <laughs> uh, I wonder, yeah, I'm, I don't know. We don't know yet. It says we should close doors, but it, it didn't tell us, like, why we might want to do that. So I guess that's something I'll be learning later. But Pago says, you kind of piqued my interest saying that Quasimorph is not that highly sought after an OG roguelike community. Yeah, it's just not. Um, just generally the, the general reception that I've seen so far. Um, and that's all the way up until recent uh, months. It's not that big a deal in this one, but I like the flavor. Ah, okay. Yeah, okay. I was wondering if there was if it actually stops certain enemies that might follow you that otherwise would uh, or can't you know they can't follow through closed doors. But uh, <laughs> some of us affectionately call Invisible Ink door closing simulator. <laughs> uh, that yeah, I can see that. 
All right, so it's not telling us what we're supposed to do here, but I think we can guess it's enemy jump. Um, also, there's running jump. I guess one of those might work. What does enemy jump actually do? Distance-wise, yeah, so that'll work. And if I press a movement key north, uh, what if I do a running jump? No, that goes a different direction automatically. Okay, let's, uh, yeah, so that doesn't actually work here. All right, so I'm not going to do that enemy jump from here goes to there and from here goes to there oh that's interesting so the more according to this it looks like the more because there's two x's and the more uh, distance you have between you and the enemy the further you can jump beyond them hmm. seems rather effective all right and we can move diagonally across corners that's something very important to know What's the reception of Realm of the Mad God, I wonder? Uh, most unique true roguelike MMOs that have been redone yet? I mean, well, that's that's not even a roguelike, so... <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I mean, it's a real-time game. It's uh, I'm So you'd have to go to the roguelite community for that. It's not really something that people even talk about uh, in the roguelike community. I mean, it's come up occasionally. It comes up in the dev community, for sure. Especially since one of the original devs hangs out on the roguelike dev discord as well. But, <laughs> um, yeah. There is no avoiding this sentry. When you move into its vision, it will shoot you. And then spend two turns reloading. Use diagonal movements properly, and you'll only get hit once. All right, so we're going to get shot here. Boom. Oh, I like that. I like that effect. That shot effect there. Oh, it went all red on us. Interestingly, the entire screen did not go red, only one small rectangle from the screen, which makes me realize that this is this tutorial map is smaller, I guess, and the full maps will actually be full size, just a, a guess there, because it didn't actually make the entire thing red there. And L5, okay, so two turns of reloading, diagonal movement. All right, so it's just diagonal movement. Sentry goes like, in, right, in the field, you will need to unlock the elevator. Before you can escape that level, press each of these three buttons by moving into them. To activate them, okay. Boom, boom. So these are elevator buttons. Oh shoot! Wait, I'm moving too fast here. Whoa! What? 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 The line just appeared. What's that line doing? What was that line there for? I, I see now in the bottom right corner there's an elevator thing. What was that line there? Now you meet your antagonist, the hunter. It can sense you from any distance. Okay. What's over here? Oh shoot! <laughs> That's the hunter. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Um, have you reloaded the p the page recently? You might have a buggy version. I just reloaded it. I mean, I just started uh, today. <laughs> Andrew says I did the same. Oh, walking over there next to the hunter. <laughs> um, okay, so let's see. What were ability abilities again? We can jump to there. What's this X here for? I wonder. It's telling us we could do something. I guess I can wall run. Um, jump off wall. No, we're gonna wall run down to here. We're going to go through here, and then we're going to jump off the wall. We're going to go as fast as we can. Oh, there's also a running jump. You can't fight it. Run towards the exit. Oh, use four running jump to gain a lead. Okay, that's what it was I was, Yeah, yeah, sure. That's what we're doing. We're going to now use that. We're using all our abilities. There we go. We got our lead. Yeah, acceptable job. Don't embarrass me on the job. There we go. Okay, so I guess we're going into the actual game now. Here we go. Uh, the overlay is busted. That's weird. Oh, for the oh yeah, hmm. That's I, I know you just added uh, full screen today or whatever. I saw that in your uh, um, comments. So I guess the full screen didn't account for that. The full screen didn't account for uh, uh, specifically uh, that overlay thing. Hmm. I wonder what else it affected, if anything. But there you go. One thing to fix. Yay. <laughs> Oh, the roguelike debate sounds like an ancient war, I reckon. Yeah, it gets argued uh, every day on the, the, the server. And uh, we banned it on the roguelike subreddit because it just leads to flame wars that don't actually solve anything. They will never solve anything. So everyone pretty much agreed. No more allowed, uh, allowing of discussing, discussing the roguelike definition. But you can do it all you want on the Discord. People are happy to engage in that every single day. <laughs> It literally gets talked about on most days. So there it is, amulet.dat. Grab it. Oh, I like the, uh, <laughs> I like how it's uh, all colored like that. 
So here we go. Grab alert. Runner detected. Hunter activated. Okay, so here's the elevator. Oh, there's the hunter. Okay, here we go. Boom. Time to run. Three floors of security between you and the exit. Good luck, runner. See you on the other side. Okay, what do those lines mean? Oh, I know what they mean. That's the overlay. <laughs> now I get it. Now that we know the overlay is broken, that overlay was supposed to point to the buttons. Ah, that would be really cool. I mean, obviously, it's a, it's a nice effect. I like that, the pointy effect. So that's what, it wasn't just the uh, the flashing thing. Apparently, it was also <laughs> the, the uh, pointing to the buttons special effect, which is nice. I, I like that effect. And that's okay. We can imagine it. <laughs> Understandable better than us, the weather small talk. <laughs> Uh, sort of. Some people get tired of it, but the thing is, new people are always joining the roguelike community and learning what um, more traditional folks think about it. Okay, so we need to hit these buttons. Let's find out what the difficulty is really like out here. Okay, that is something. Also, there's there's always this hunter behind us, so we can't waste time, right? What is... Alright, that is what that is. Okay, let's see. Um, so I can actually just wait for this dude. Looks like there's another patrol to the north as well. Mm, also animates your movement when you get shot, that sort of thing. Oh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Drew says, use your mind palace. Yeah. <laughs> Doing that. Okay, so. Looks like we'll be okay here. Ooh. Okay, that's how far they see? Ooh, that's pretty far. Um, man, we're gonna have to get all the way back to the north. These are the buttons. Hmm. Okay, well, one button's activated here. Um... And there's, I guess you can't really have, you don't really have an opportunity to wait and see what these things are going to do. Oh my god. This is kind of crazy. Alert. Hunter entering floor. Alright, so I also I need to find out what these guys do when they're patrolling. Like, are they always going in a route or back and forth or what? Like, is that guy going to turn around? Nope, he didn't. Just turn around. Okay. Fun. Going to wall run there. Hmm, I kind of wanted to wall jump here, but, uh, or jump off the wall, I mean. Running jump, enemy jump. We're going to have an enemy coming from the north, it looks like. Yeah, that's going to make it a little harder to get by here. Uh, we could do it with a regular jump. Uh, I don't know which way I want to go yet, though. Ah, uh, looks like I might want to go north. Boom. Um, okay, that pointed to the southeast. I guess that's where the elevator is. <laughs> I'm not actually sure. Where's the elevator? Shouldn't it appear? It didn't appear this time. Uh, Drew says this is killing me. <laughs> that's okay. It's typical, especially when you've just changed something, right? No one's actually really, not many people have played it yet or had a chance to. But does that line draw from your current location to the target? Because if it does, I'll just base it on that. It draws from your current location, yeah? Okay, so I know where the elevator is. I got an idea, so the southeast then. Um, that's fine. That's good enough information. All right, so well, the question here is, do I head southwest, south again? Because that's a familiar territory. Do I head around east? I'm not familiar with the level generation yet, but I can kind of get an idea. It looks like boxes. So we don't know what enemies are over there, but we'll see. All right, okay, now it has appeared. It actually appeared. It takes a turn to appear. It doesn't appear immediately. Should it have appeared immediately? Or it, it took a turn for that to appear. It seems like it might as well appear immediately uh, um, rather than waiting for a turn, it's considering it drew the line. Um, but now it's there. I wonder if it does it normally. Oh, it's a redraw bug you never squashed? Gotcha. Okay. Yeah, that, that would obviously be something you'd want to do there. Oh, assume the overlay was enough. Oh, was that also something to kind of make up for that? Hmm. <laughs> this is killer. This is a common thing in the 70 year old street over right? That's true. Okay, uh, here comes the hunter already. Oh my god. That thing's getting close. Oh wow, okay, he moves fast. Um, yeah, we need to go faster. Uh, I don't really want to jump here though. That seems bad. Oh, whoa. Whoops, I accidentally jumped. <laughs> my bad. Oh god, it's the other direction. Um... Also, one thing I could have checked, which I didn't before, is actually what's the real, um, wh what is the real cooldown on Burrow? Because, I mean, it says it's very slow, you might only get to use it once, but I want to actually see it in action to get a feel for exactly how long it is. That 
And how far does it go? Does it only go through one wall or does it go through multiple walls? That's something we don't know. <laughs> it's that game jam flavor you can't miss, yeah. <laughs> All right, so what I'd like to do is get off to the west side, actually, and jump off the wall, but... Yeah, I went the wrong way. If I'd gone southwest, or southwest, we've been in great shape. But I didn't know if there was going to be a corridor uh, to the east of us that heads south or uh, west over here. Mm. Oh, Andrew says, first time he's burrowed, I trapped myself in an enclosed space. Yeah, that, that, that's what I'd be afraid of. It sounds dangerous to do. I mean, I guess if you, if you know what's on the other side, then it's cool. But uh, otherwise, yeah, seems pretty dangerous. But if you're going to die otherwise... Also, I guess the H in the bottom right here is our health, which interestingly goes to halfway across the bar. It's kind of nothing showing us that that's the end there, other than the guess, because it's halfway across. Uh, I guess I could have also, during the tutorial, looked to see how that changed when we got hit, but I did not do that. All right, so what we want to do here is we can't do a running jump. Um, I can't even get over there to the other side. An enemy jump w might work, actually. I... I, I how f whatever the max range on that is that seems like more a more dangerous way to try to get around this but it might work oh the other way would be a wall run how far does that actually go i could go southeast and then wall run that would work so what i'm thinking is i could head east jump over the hunter and then jump south that's one solution the other solution would be to head southeast here and then do a wall run across and then go around the corner uh, that seems a little safer but oh it's actually pretty safe it only happened because of a map gen bug the trapping yourself i see Oh, shoot. Actually, he sees over there, too, though, so that's not actually going to work. Hmm. I guess I'm not going to be able to do a wall run because, yes, he can see right over there just fine. Um, I like the uh, full screen, uh, by the way, though. Good job on that, Drew. I mean, obviously, it didn't, didn't fully work out all the little kinks yet, but uh, it's, it's, this is much nicer to play on than you know when I set up a test window for the, uh, the really small one. I was surprised to see that because it's pretty rare that um, you can't full screen most of the uh, itch 7 DRLs in one way or another, unless they already have like super big tiles or something like, or some kind of game like that where it's not going to matter anyway. But this one was fairly small and I had made a blown up window for it. Uh, okay, so I guess we're going to try and enemy jump this guy. Um, all right, this is going to work. No, um, sort of. Ooh, he went the other way. And now we're going to do a... Uh, Jump off the wall and go south. We could go away from this guy. And then we're going to go east. Shoot, we're going to be in range of this guy in a second. I can't do a wall run from here, can I? No, I cannot. I could do a running jump. Whoops, wrong button. There we go. Boom! Oh, yeah. Running jump. All right, here we go. Boom. Okay. We've got our lines. We know where we're going. <laughs> I built this in the morning because I wanted to record a video of the game for your YouTube. Was having the same experience. This is tiny. Ah, yeah. Playing your own game is a very good idea. <laughs> um, and, and trying to make videos, especially, too. Videos can tell you what, where you want to improve things, especially for other people who are going to be doing streaming and or making videos um, early on. Obviously not super vital during 70-hour week itself, but it's a good thing to do as first patch type thing. And that's actually, yeah, in previous years, I've had that happen a number of times. I'm going to play or stream a game. That, that's normally one of the things a lot of devs will try in the first week is... Uh, to make it a little more streamable, either big, bigger or different fonts, things like that. Um, I've even, I guess it was last year at least, I know I asked at least one dev if they could do something like that so I'd be able to stream a game that was otherwise unstreamable. It was only downloadable and it only opened in a super tiny uh, window that didn't look very good when blown up on its own. So, and they did actually did that. All right, so that worked out pretty well. Um, I'm, I'm just the beginning. Okay, all right, we need to get over there. I like the uh, collection of abilities. And also, oh, that's right, I need to be using my uh, abilities more. I I'm moving a little bit slowly here. Otherwise, we're going to run, we're going to have too much trouble later. Um, <clears throat> there we go. Ability. But that's the thing, do you use your abilities... As soon as you can to make take advantage of the cooldown 
uh, time when there's no danger or, you know, if you use too many of them, then when the danger comes, you are still waiting for cooldowns to get away from that danger. So it's kind of interesting. Um, all right, it's like right now I could jump to save a turn and then have to wait a few turns, but it seems like I'm probably going to be okay. No, I can, I can activate that from here, right? Yes, I can. Okay. Making sure I can do that from diagonal. Yeah, these other two are going to be kind of more problematic. Hmm. Like right now, I can't be sure that I want to use an ability or not. Because this guy's coming, and I don't know what he's doing. So we're playing like uh, Mirror's Edge, the uh, the 7 DRL, right? Actually, hasn't some, I, don't, I wonder if someone, for some reason, I have a recollection someone might have tried that before. Not necessarily based on movement, though, or not quite the same way. Hmm. Don't recall. So many... Uh, so many, so many 70 RLs over the years, but uh, I like this game. It's uh, it's fun. It's uh, unique. Mirror's Edge, another inspiration for sure. Yeah, and for the mechanics, right? I never actually played through the whole game, but I d I just played through the tutorial of Mirror's Edge and uh, a couple of the earlier missions just to see what it was like. It wasn't really my type of game to complete, um, but it was interesting to try out. All right, so we need to have it cover a long distance here. So if I do an enemy jump here, we can get all the way over there. Oh my god, how do I get to the east side? <laughs> uh, danger. Okay, there we go. A hunter entering floor. It looks like north is blocked, so I'm assuming I have to go south. Uh, I assume. Maybe I should dig through this wall. <laughs> I just want to get to the other side. I wonder if it would save time. I'm going to dig through this wall just as, a pre as to see what happened. Layer movement set there is actually somewhat limited momentum and a lot of vaulting jumping capabilities, but more about pathing efficiently than movement abilities. That's true. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, that's, that's, that's true. Uh, I, I can see that. Uh, here, definitely a lot more about uh, the different abilities. I'm going to burrow through the wall just because I want to see if it's faster. Wait, what? Oh, I can't burrow through the wall. Do you have to be... Oh, why can't I burrow through this wall? Is it because it's a... Is, this, is it because this wall looks different from the other walls? There is no burrow direction here. All right, then. We're not going to do that. <laughs> no, destination is blocked. Destination is blocked? What do you, well, what's the destination? Do you have to be moving towards it to burrow? Because I was headed south? Or, I mean... I wanted to head burrow east. Oh, the other side. Oh, okay. The other side of the wall has something. Oh, okay. So it tells you that in advance. Oh, I didn't know that. Okay, that's what I was wondering about. Hmm, interesting. So I can actually just keep testing that <laughs> and see if there's something on the other side of the wall. <laughs> yeah, I won't tell you about vision. Uh huh. You can burrow into getting hit. Makes sense. But it does mean that technically I can test every single wall along here for the tedious play of trying to find out exactly where I can burrow through <laughs> every time I move. Um, so I've pretty much run out of abilities here, so I'm kind of just running south. No burrow. There's a burrow. Uh-huh. <laughs> Drew says, I should charge you a turn for this behavior. Uh, yeah, uh, I guess, technically, you, I mean, you have to do something to get rid of the tedium, either charge a turn or, so that it, people won't do it, or um, give it the information for free, which... Like, for example, if you have Burrow available to you, it also acts as a radar showing you what's on the opposite side of, of your adjacent walls. Um, that would be another approach if you wanted to give that information away. Um, it might be better than costing a turn, I think. Um, costing a turn for that would be kind of devastating, I think, because you're, if you're, especially if you, I mean, I've only just started to play, it's just a guess that it might be kind of bad. You might, I would, you know, it sounds like you might want to give radar vision for that. I mean, it's only showing you what's on the other side of the wall, and that's only if you have Burrow available to you. So if you leave the ability unused, it actually acts as another benefit. But once you use it, because you can't toggle it to figure that out anyway, it no longer gives you that ability. It's kind of an interesting way. It's, yeah, seems interesting. All right, so we do have a way here. We don't know what we're jumping into, but I don't really want to go all the way south or wherever hell I'm supposed to go. So I'm going to Burrow right through there. There we go. That's what I was looking for. Okay, um, now we have to get down there. Uh, 
jumping, jumping. All right, now I can see the burrow, yes, is very costly. All right, we're getting, we need to get to this door over here. Hmm. I don't see any abilities that are passive while on, on cooldown. Oh, the opposite? Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, that's, either one can be interesting. Abilities that are passive while on cooldown or abilities that are passive while you haven't used them and aren't on cooldown. That's kind of an interesting space um, to explore. But in this case, I mean, the ability... Yeah, it's kind of interesting. I mean, the, the ability is directly tied to that. Um, it would be, I don't know, in this particular situation, it might be awkward to do it the opposite way. All right, so we're going to now run along the wall here and get through that door. Uh, wall run will take us all the way to there. Good. Boom. Through the door. Okay, we're getting close. I don't know where the hunter is, but it's getting scary. Can I di activate this from here? I can. Oh, I got a hunter ping. There it was. He's still pretty far away. I really want to know where the elevator is. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we can now do running jump to the north and a wall run to the north. Just trying to get over here as fast as we can. Jump. Boom. That pointed southwest of me? I was just down there. Does the, uh, does the elevator appear somewhere new? No, northeast was. Oh, northeast. Oh, okay. It would make more sense, too. Yeah. I didn't... It was such a short line, I didn't get to see the line animate. I didn't see it until it had already finished. And so I was wondering if it pointed south and then west, or... Okay, the other option would be north and then east. Okay. All right, there we go. All right, there's our nice little overlay. We got to see the animation that time. Um, third level. Blessed run, never saw the hunter. Yeah, dug through that wall. I think digging through that wall was kind of key, too. I'm not going to run along an entire freaking wall to find a way around that. It seemed pretty obvious to wanted to get through there. But all right, let's see how this last floor is. Okay. Hmm, I guess I didn't necessarily. No, no. Yeah. Uh, also, I guess enemies don't even chase you. All right, this is a problem. I'd like to use an ability, but I can't because I might want to go southeast. Probably want to go through here. Okay, that's bad. Hmm. Apparently, maybe should have gone north side. What if this is, ends up being some kind of dead end? I don't know anything about the level generation since this is the first time I've played, so it makes it harder to make navigation decisions like that. But you know, after a few runs, you can start to get an, a meta advantage in terms of the uh, level generation. First thing I want to do is move further south. Okay, that's helpful. Single width corridors are horrible, yeah. Oh, that was good also. You didn't need to spend a run uh, really unless and don't waste your first moves before the hunter arrives. Yeah. Uh, okay, these two guys, I don't know what they're doing though. First thing I'm going to do is check if I can burrow. I can burrow. Hmm. Okay. I burrowed. Not entirely necessary, but uh, did it anyway. <laughs> Actually, wait a minute. Wasn't there a door there? There was a door on the east side of that corridor to the south. It's not showing now, though, after I passed through up here. Pretty sure there was. Or there a door, or there was someone, there was a dude down there. Maybe I remembered incorrectly, and it was just from the south, guy from the southwest and the south. Anyway, so yeah, single width quarter is bad. Now we're not in the single width quarter. Uh, I know the game, uh, the tips are like save your burrow, but if I'm seeing a long corridor like that, it's gonna it might save a lot of time. It seems worth it to try and do this. Uh, okay, now we need to buy these two guys. Oof. What are they doing? Not bad, not bad. Oh, hunter hunter for juggernaut mode. Wait a minute, what? Oh no, what's juggernaut mode? <laughs> no, what? <laughs> the tutorial didn't tell me about juggernaut mode. <laughs> uh, <laughs> all right then. Um, what 
what's concerning? <laughs> Did something, is it something, you're still in the tutorial, follow the white rabbit, what? <laughs> Juggernaut mode, oh yeah, oh yeah, all right, there was one tip. It said you have to learn to do something, you have to learn different tactics or whatever. Uh, <laughs> that would be a great gag, yeah, <laughs> still in the tutorial. Um, uh, that, um, yeah, the, the, I remember now the page did say you need new tactics for the end. I mean, I don't know what that's going to mean then. We'll probably die <laughs> figuring out what the heck this means. But, uh, I'm assuming that the main core goal still stands. So that's our goal for now. Let's see what we've got. One, we've got jump, uh, northeast here. Oh, I can't jump diagonally, can I? That's right. I can't shoot. Uh, I wanted to jump diagonally. That's more problematic, not being able to jump diagonally. When there's these guys crossing each other. Hmm. Hmm. Jump off wall. All right. I guess I could try it this way then. Diagonal jump is on the think about more list. Seems potentially OP. Yeah, I mean, I haven't played enough to make a determination on that, but if if that's your assumption, I'm guessing it's probably right. It, it does seem like right, like right there would have made this easier. So, I mean, does this need to be easier is the question. Okay. Now we've got still two more, and there's a lot of guys over there. Can I go? All right, juggernaut mode. I'm kind of worried about that. All right, we need some more abilities. That, oh, 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 I see it. It's big. It's coming and it's big. <laughs> oh, God. I'm not going to have enough time to jump out of here. Oh. oh, that's right. You don't have to be afraid of getting shot. Okay, I might actually get shot here. <laughs> it's probably worth it. Get shot. All right, how much did my health go down? I, all right, I can kind of tell. It looks like it can take like five hits. Five or six hits even? It's not too bad. Uh, I, I, I'm, the thing about the health down there is it doesn't show your maximum health. It probably should show some kind of uh, rest of your bar, the, the part of the bar you're missing. Uh, and also explain that it's kind of the maximum by showing some kind of end cap or something. Um, I'm guessing, because I think it went to halfway across, which means it looks like we get five hits. And I'm assuming all enemies do the same amount of damage. That's actually a lot. You can take a lot of damage by... Uh, uh, or you could, that's that's a decent number of hits considering you have so many abilities to evade as well. But yeah, it'd be nice to have that down there. Uh, so wait, I, oh, that's right. They take two turns too to, to get ready to fire again. Also, wait a minute. Does that include the hunter as well? If we get shot by the hunter? Hmm. Oh, you can take a lot. It's generous. 10 total. Oh, wow. That's a lot. Yeah, it, it looked. Oh, okay. All right. That's helpful. Um, yeah, health is always a resource up until the point it isn't. <laughs> Uh, okay, so let's keep moving here. Um, so yeah, that guy's reloading right now. Um, shoot, there's a lot of stuff in the way here, though. Uh-oh. I can't do a run... I can, I'll get shot if I do this running jump. It's kind of unfortunate. I don't, I'd like to do this running jump. But there's someone in the way, which means I get shot on the way over there right, by this patrol coming from the north. And then, of course, we'll be in view of that dude right there. And I guess I'm not allowed to attack the guy, so I still have to find another way around him anyway. I'm just going to get... Oh, wait, what? Oh, it stops you when you get shot. Okay, I didn't know that. I thought I still got to go. Yeah. Oh, I get shot by... The, you get st stopped as you're shot. Okay, so... All right, that was a learning moment. <laughs> you get stopped as you're shot. I hadn't actually done that before. I tried to jump through. I knew I would get shot, but I didn't know it would stop me in midair. I thought I would still get to go. It's not that generous. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, I thought I would get shot and then still land where I wanted to land. Uh, that is clearly not the case, but that's okay. We're now uh, moving along. All right, there it is down there. Oh, wait, so I can't do a wall run past this guy to the southeast either, then. But it did find the door. Wish I could, like, shoot this guy. Oof. Getting nasty. 
A lot of cooldowns. <laughs> Wait, do you know what Juggernaut done mode does then? Oh, I mean, no, I don't. I don't know anything about it. Uh, I have not played before. So this is my first uh, time. And when I see other people playing the seven DRLs that I haven't played before, I also skip over that. So uh, I have not seen. I've only noticed seen. I've seen pictures of people that people were posting uh, your game in the seven DRL channel, but I haven't read anything about it. So this is my first experience with the game. Uh, that is, uh, we're gonna find out. Um, I mean, maybe it kills you in one hit, but it doesn't normally kill you in one hit. I don't know. Uh, enemy jump. Uh, I need to go north, though. I guess I'm going to have to let it shoot me and find out what happens. It's not going to be helpful, though. Hmm. Let's see what happens. What's happening? But I didn't get shot yet because he moved into my view. Enemy jump does not actually work here. So I'm going to move north and see what happens. Okay, got shot. <clears throat> All right, that's... We're getting some, we're getting back in order here. Uh, it's not that bad with the hunter getting that, you know, can shoot you like that and still be okay. All right. Um, I need to save some abilities here, but the hunter's going to catch me soon. I can't do wall run yet. I wanted to roll into the east, but that's not going to work here. Shoot. Hmm. I'm trying to get as quickly as possible over there. All right, here's wall run, and it, oh, perfect distance there. Jump off wall was so close. If I had jump off wall, it would be perfect. Instead, we're going to have to do this and that, and the exit is now to the southeast of us. Shoot, that's a long way, and it's past a bunch of enemies. Hmm. One thing I don't know about enemy jump is exactly how far it's capable of going. Does it? And then which directions? Only horizontal or what? Because I might want to go east along here. Wall run is... Alright, there it is. Oh, shoot. Oh, yeah. That looks exciting. Can't jump off the wall. Enemy jump. Oh, enemy jump doesn't work here. Alright, it's too far. I was, that's what the whole thing I was going to see is how far can enemy jump take me? Could it take me to the south or not? All right. The kingdom for a peek. Yeah. <laughs> Peeking around there would be useful. Uh, unfortunately, heading south, we can't use a wall jump. I want to go straight south. Um, hmm. I can't actually really jump here. We can just take the hit. A hunter, though is unfortunately if i oh, i wonder if i should wait here too hot down there yeah probably i really want to go south but if i try and go another way i don't know if that's going to work out very well though i could go around it's true the long way i really wanted to try and just make it south because if i can take that many hits mm, i don't know what's further south than those peas to the south but even if i get hit four times by once by every single one of these guys and if there's nothing else down there, then we still win. Uh, I can still take four more hits. So it almost is worth the gamble. Because if I go around, I'm not guaranteed that I'm not going to have enough abilities to get all the way around away from the hunter. Surely there won't be another bot down there. Yeah, I mean, there might be. That's the thing. In roguelikes, it's dangerous going into uh, unknown territory. you gotta, you got to wonder whether you're risking it. Oh, juggernaut mode. Wait a minute. Ah, I think I know what Juggernaut mode is now. I'm looking at the map, and I am now seeing missing wall pieces, or or money, if that's considered destroyed walls. I see a few of those. I see those uh, dollar signs. I think it's going through walls. It's crashing through the walls. That must be what it is. It's interesting that I can see those, though. Or I must have seen them earlier and didn't even notice when the hunter was in view. He's the Juggernaut, <laughs> yeah. That's right. Uh, makes total sense then. So he can go through walls. Um, sure. Yeah, that's all right. That makes sense. And it's not really going to change much of the calculus here. But uh, I guess it changes a little bit. Yeah, <laughs> Juggernaut is basically that massive jar of juice that crashes through the walls with a grin. <laughs> right, the Kool-Aid man. It's, it's the Kool-Aid hunter. <laughs> 
Yeah, see, that, that's a bit of a problem then, because um, if I go around the west side here and then head south, he can cut me off by going through the wall, which means I don't actually gain a distance advantage that way. I thought of the Marvel movie guy when I saw oh, Hulk. <laughs> Oh, it would have changed some earlier moves. He cuts corners hard, which can be a surprise. Yeah. Um, hmm. Yeah. For me right now, I don't think it would have changed too much because my main, main goal was still to go straight for these buttons as fast as possible. But it does change what I want to do right now, it might. See, that makes me even more likely to try to risk going straight south. There's a non-zero chance of death. Actually, wait. Oh, that's the thing. So I can't... If you run in a pass, the enemy, you also get shot. So that's problematic. Hmm. Because, yeah, if I, but if I want to go around west, it's, uh, I won't really be able to get away from him. I mean, he's going to cut me off when I come through there, and then I don't have enough abilities to get down. I don't know. I'm kind of stuck here. Uh, if too bad there's no wall here. If there was a wall to the north, I'd be really in good shape because I could jump down. Oh, no, I can't. I'd still get hit from the side. Freaking patrols. I like how the patrols, they're not just uh, facing uh, one direction. They're also the whole area around next to them. Um, it's a good uh, layout for problem solving. I'm trying to get around these guys. Not not just single direction. and Not even an FOV cone in front of them. It even includes a little bit of the space behind them. So there's this like, big block. Works out pretty well. Um, so now that I've learned earlier that you get hit... You stop as soon as you get hit. It means I can't actually use abilities to get by these guys until I get hit three times. And then I get hit further below. Hmm. Yeah, the fact that there's too many down there means I'll probably die. Oh, that's true. Only for running jump. Oh, okay. Well, oh, well, it still don't have enough of other abilities powered. So the jump would technically get me two spaces instead of one in that case. Um, only running jump. Hmm. Oh, the blue spaces for running jump? Oh, I should pay attention to those blue spaces then. Jump off wall, man. See, so we could... Technically, right now, what I could do is jump off the wall to the west and then try to go around. But again, they don't have enough abilities lined up. The hunter's going to catch me and go right through the wall anyway. Uh, we gain a little distance. We could gain more distance on him by getting shot uh, because I'm assuming you get shot and then he has to wait like the others, right? I mean, I think I saw it earlier. So he uh, will lag behind a bit. Hmm. But I also don't know what's around on the south side. It could be dangerous. But this... Uh, why does there have to be quite so many guys in this quarter to the east? <laughs> and would it be any safer to the south? Because going over there will be taking damage. So I'll be more damaged when we get there. Um, otherwise, you're invincible. Uh-huh. Hmm. Uh, all right. So anyway, there's two routes. This is kind of like the defining moment here. Uh, I can go west... And try to get away from him going that way. Uh, it seems kind of dangerous, but I'm going to do it anyway. All right, there he is over there. So now, Mr. Juggernaut taking out the walls. If I had to jump off wall again, I could just do it to the south. Now, nah, you need to wait from these guys anyway. Hello, Juggernaut. Yep, you keep coming on now. All right, we can just go around like this. It's not too bad. Uh, there's going to be enemies over here too, which I have to get past. All right, there's an S over here. Um, there's another guy to the south. There's a lot of guys down here, too. <laughs> yeah, that was a good enemy jump. Um, it's I like how you can, you're can you really using that to your advantage. I mean, the fact that enemies are present is what enables you to use this ability. I like the collection of abilities that the player has here. It's pretty cool. Um, nice mix. All right, so we're decently far from the hunter now, but now there's more enemies to the south anyway, uh, but it looks like it's not quite as dense. All right, is this guy going to turn north? He probably is. Running jump. No, he's, he's going to go back east. I don't actually know where this is going to go, but I might want to stay to the southeast just in case he turns north, I guess. Yep, he turned north. Oh, that's right. I can't jump that way. 
Oh, shoot. I pressed the wrong button. No, <laughs> didn't mean to do that. Ah, uh, that's too bad. Anyway, hopefully I, I wasted that, but hopefully that doesn't mess me up too badly. Yeah, I think we probably got this too. I just need to make sure you don't screw it up. So what I could do here is uh, jump off the wall of the south or just get hit by this guy. I'm going to get hit by one guy or another. Um, I'll just get hit by this guy. And go this way. And do a running jump and go straight into the elevator. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. Nice. Won the first run. That's a, a cool game. I like it. Um, that's, that's, a, that's a lot of fun. Um, juggernaut mode. <laughs> that's a good addition, too, to the end there, to let them go through the walls. Um, uh, yeah, I think we figured out most of it. Um, dang. Uh, really good game. I, uh, I like this one. Uh, great running, very careful player. Might be tuned too easy. Very, yeah, it's, uh, I'm play slowly, and yeah, I mean, it's, I think it's pretty well balanced overall. I mean, managed to win, but I think that's kind of like the right difficulty level for a 7 DRL. It feels like it to me. I mean, I, I wonder, do you have any stats from players? As in, like, uh, um, are you collecting anything at all like that? Like win rates or something like that? Or you don't not have anything? No stats? Okay. Just curious if you'd known, like, where people are dying and stuff like that. Uh, next year, you'll be ready for that? Ah. Yeah, it can be nice to have some of that info on the back end just to see, um, get more um, real feedback, just more aggregate feedback of yeah, where, where people are dying, what people are doing, how many people win. But you've watched a lot of streams. Ah, people often die on the first level. Mm, well, learning the mechanics, I would have expected to have died. Uh, I usually expect to die in a 7 DRL in my first run and then figure out the mechanic. Once Use that to figure out the mechanics because that's for experimentation and then go and uh, win on the second run a lot of the time. As long as it's balanced, okay for that. Um, the other one I had mentioned earlier that I'm still in the middle of playing. Actually, I could show it uh, here. Uh, just moving really fast, not thinking, just using cooldowns. Oh, whenever. Oh, <laughs> yeah. So that was uh, pretty cool, though. I like the game. And a uh, nice little intro screen here. <laughs> that's that's cool. A cyberpunk escape rogue -like. Um Yeah, I like it. And obviously, nice and... Uh, Nice and uh, crisp and simple ASCII to see. The fonts are busted now. Oh, are the fonts busted now? The game is falling down already. Are the font is that, oh, is that font busted fonts there? I can't, I didn't actually know. Oh, it looks different. It looks like the same fonts that were used when it was smaller as opposed to the larger font. But yeah, the, the, exactly. When I was playing a second ago was the, the non-serif thicker font. This looks like a blown up version of the, the original font that was in the, the small version. Uh, press any key. Huh. Oh, look at that. It changed. <laughs> Bizarre. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, that's something else. Yeah, I am on Firefox. Haven't tested it in Firefox at all. Uh, yeah, I am using Firefox, is correct. Um, so yeah, all I did there was at the end of the game, just uh, hit enter to restart, and it switched automatically based on that for some reason. So... And wait, wait, look. Now, did it just go to the other font again? And then we go bigger again. Boom, look at that. We're back. <laughs> we got the font back. So that's how you fix it. Just change the full screen mode. <laughs> See if the overlay works now. Uh, okay. Walk to the right. All right. We'll get back in the menu here. There it is, the amulet. Boom. The overlay. Um, boom. Oh, check it out. There it is. We fixed the overlay, too. <laughs> well, well, why? <laughs> That's always the next question. <laughs> Magic? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, it was, I, I wonder why that would be. I mean, you, you mentioned reloading or whatever, but again, I had just loaded the page today right when I started streaming. So I didn't like load it earlier and play from that. Um, browser stuff. Firefox fires the resize event differently. Ah, okay, browser stuff. Eek. Gotta hate browser stuff. Um, anyway, uh, so you're planning on doing a few more fixes to this and then not much else with it, or what? <clears throat> For the future of Runner. We're mostly done with it. 
Oh, really? Noodling on a bigger game version? Oh, that's cool. Um, yeah, I'd like to see more of it. This is this this could be expanded for sure. Um, you can see this. I mean, it's it's really nice as is. It's already a very complete uh, core mechanic demonstration 70RL. But yeah, you can see some neat places for this to go, like an actual bigger game with uh, even more types of enemies and, you know, even like, you know, more of a story stuff, other kinds of objectives. It could be cool. Yeah, I think it has a lot of room to grow too, yeah. Maybe a heisty mode? Yeah, <clears throat> sure. Yeah, there's a lot of possibilities. Um, cool. And uh, even more tools you could have in addition to just movement as well. A lot of options. Ah, push your luck item collection for this. Oh, I see. <laughs> yeah, that could get exciting too. Um, I can see actually, yeah, um, could have even been in the CS7 DRL mode or just, yeah, add another thing where you can just go for extra objectives for extra points if you want to. Um, otherwise, you know, once you've run, well, once you've won uh, one or two times, it's probably not a whole lot of new things to, to push for. Smoke bombs, EMP, yeah. Hmm. A wall laser, you place it and wait in turns. Uh, to break the wall down. Hmm. That's that's an interesting idea. Yeah. Trade trade time for getting through something as well. A different kind of burrow. Creating temporary walls around you. Redirect bots. Manage vision. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of neat stuff. Oh, with uh, for item. Yeah. Push like item collection. Yeah. For different items. Oh, yeah. Items that would give you like even just more abilities. Right. Um, expanding your ability uh, abilities that way that you could continue to use rather than consumables. Yeah. That's a cool idea. Um, charge based abilities. Yeah. Limited use <clears throat> as well. Cool stuff. Yeah. All right. So, um, yeah, but as me I was mentioning earlier, what was this, uh, I forgot how it was connected. Drop a camera. Oh yeah. That, that'd be cool. Right. Yeah. See FOV elsewhere as well. Enemy attractor. Dang. You're reading off your list here. <laughs> My journal is full. <laughs> Cool. Well, I guess we'll see more of that happening in the uh, the 70 RL 10 or even just regular roguelike dev after 70 RL is over. So get to see that after playing it. It's always fun after having played through some of these games to see, you know, the devs continue to work on them <clears throat> over time in the uh, community. Now, hopefully I quit my job in January so I got a bunch of time on my hands tag. Ah, did, did you spend a lot of the week on this particular 70 RL because you had more time to pour into it because uh, uh, you're not working? I know a bunch of people uh, take time off for the week, uh, even when they do have a job. And so I always do, even though my job is a little more flexible. But uh, if, when I do 70 RL, I do take the whole week off just for that. And I did fullish time, got a family, even made 50 hours. Yeah, 50 hours is pretty good for a 70 RL. Very respectable. Uh, yeah, family, though, takes time away from that. Hmm. All right. Actually, so yeah, another one I'd show real quick. Um is this i didn't actually wasn't planning on streaming this one but since we've got time and i'm in the middle of playing it i was going to introduce this game real quick i guess all right i should get back to them thanks for playing yeah go hang out with your family and tell them what an awesome game you made <laughs> and yeah thanks for answering some questions i'm glad you're able to make it uh let me see here i would have to make this window this is another game i was oh wait i have this no, that's oh, that's a different window. Oh, that actually kind of lines up. I'll just use that window. Um, no, actually, I shouldn't just use that window. This was another game I'm actually in the middle of playing, <laughs> so I just thought I'd show it while we're. I forget how it connected. I was gonna mention uh, just to introduce it because it's actually a pretty cool game. But oh yeah, I know I was gonna mention it is because in in light of the fact that uh, the size for seven DRL, like how the scope and length of game and stuff, this game is pretty cool it's um one second i'm gonna close that and i can link to it um oh wait i don't want to do that just in case one second let me here we go boom there's a link to this one in particular it's called rogue absorb <clears throat> and if you look down here at the page itself, it's got an interesting page with a whole lot of color on it, huh? <laughs> it's actually just a, it's a number-based game, and I, I like the mechanics. It's pretty cool. Um, 
I wasn't planning on streaming it, but we're going through the games faster today, so I might as well throw this up here since I'm in the middle of my game, which I've been playing for a while now, because that's one of the things I wanted, wanted to mention about length of games. Some of the seven DRLs are too long. Uh, this one is one of them, I think. Um, I recommend playing it and trying this game out, but trying to finish it, it takes a while if you want to play optimally anyway. I mean, if you want to play, uh, you're probably going to be more likely to die if you don't, but uh, the, the, so the idea about this game that the instructions are actually showed right here at the bottom rogue absorb you're basically you're a number I'm this number 8 right here and whenever you absorb a number whenever you uh, uh, touch another number it adds to your number and when you get to 9 it cycles back to 0 and you can only eat numbers that are uh, lesser than or equal to you um, and there's different colors for the numbers. There's hunters. I've just entered this new floor. This I'm on level 13, and I'm thinking there's 20 levels. It says final 20, so I assume it's making me assume there's 20 levels. This number never changes, so I don't think it said that in the instructions. But I haven't died yet. You can actually revive if you want. There's a, a free revive thing, but I haven't died yet. Um, and because uh, you can play pretty optimally, uh, tediously, but. Um, it's not that bad, so I really, I, it's kind of an interesting, ga interesting game to try out. Uh, so we're on level 13 now, find the amulet. So you can see their past, this is what I've done in the past uh, before entering, enter level 13, and uh, absorbed, these are the numbers I was absorbing. So the different colors are different types of enemies. Yellow, you can absorb no matter your number, automatically. They're basically, so they're kind of like free numbers you can add. They're kind of your, like your resources for controlling your number when you have no other options. And then there's green neutrals which uh, you have to be, you also, you have to be greater than or equal to them to absorb them, but they won't attack you. And then the rest are enemies. Uh, there's really only other, a couple other kinds of enemies. There's the guardians, these uh, blue guys who will uh, come at you only when they see you, so you can kind of break line of sight and they'll stop chasing if you're far enough away. And there's these guys, which are hunters. They come straight for you from anywhere on the map. So we, and we, and you can see them. I like the fact in this game that you can see uh, the yellow ones and the hunters. So you know this guy's coming for you. When he gets to you, you've got to be able to eat a four or you die. And, um, and it, it's also really nice to see your yellow resources out there. The green, which sort of counter the resources, you can't see, but they're out there too. Uh, so yeah, that's the, the gist of this game. Um, let me see, I think I had a numpad on for this one. Click into the window here. I'm still playing. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so there's the stairs. We just entered this new floor. Um, Rogue Absorb. Okay, there's your more games. So there's a six to the north. That one is a guardian. Um, and so we can eat him. That will be eight plus six, which will bring us down to four. Um, uh, because it's going to cycle us around. Uh... You shall become God, amen. Yeah. <laughs> it's uh, right. That's the descriptions on this page. <laughs> it's interesting, um, but it's it's a really simple premise that I think actually works out pretty well. Uh, it, uh, the main problem is it's a really long game because these maps are fairly large and uh, yeah can be a little tedious. But it's not that bad. It's not there's not actually not that much tedium. It's just a little long is all because you already it could, i think progression should be faster um towards the harder difficulties where basically you have more higher higher level enemies higher levels being mainly these blue guys the hunter gets stronger and stronger too over time i guess but these blue guys are getting noticeably stronger now it should have happened a long a while ago because a lot of the earlier levels were a little easy by comparison but it's getting harder now so we can eat this guy but then we're a four and then when this guy would eat us if he can see us, but we're an eight and we match him. So if I go east, I can actually get this guy. The problem is these are in the way. And if we pass through these, our number changes. <laughs> when is the religion story arc coming to Cogmind? Well, I mean, it's coming, sort of. I mean, there is, um, there already is, you know, some kind of, uh, you know, r religion, ad re religion adjacent types of things that you can find and uh, that appear in there. Uh, warship type things, and I'm sure there will be more actually uh, coming in the future. Um, the really obvious, blatant ones I don't think would come for quite a while. I don't know if we'll actually get to that, but there are, there is definitely uh, expansion ideas that are, are built around that, which is I think would be pretty interesting to play with. But uh, it's kind of far out there. I don't know if we'll actually ever reach that state, but. Okay, so yeah, anyway, just showing this off real quick. So right now we can't really head east to get the 8 because we're blocked by these yellow guys in the way. 
and but I don't want the six because if we take the six, we lower our number. You want to try and eat stuff that's as close to your own number as possible. So if I move away, those blue guys aren't going to chase us because we're out of view now. But I can't go south here. There's a two down there. That sucks. Anyway. All right. Then the six is coming after us. Great. Yeah, there's a two. That would make us a zero if I touched the two. But then we can go grab the nine. Then we'd be a nine. <laughs> Plexion. The religion is what the players bring. Like our glorious martyr plasma cutter who died for our sins. <laughs> yeah. That is, that is true. <clears throat> People get religious about their items. <laughs> so you don't, it's it, like any other roguelike, you don't really want to head into unknown territory here. It's kind of dangerous. It could get blocked in. The cult of rocket launcher. Mm. I think it's more the cult of rocket array. <laughs> People are really big on rocket arrays. All right, so there's a seven to the east. That's not bad for eating as an eight. I would have preferred to get the eight above us, but I'll take that. Now we're five. And so we can go back and get this two and become a seven again. So now we're seven. We're basically trying to find, basically just want to find the downstairs as fast as possible. But they're pretty far away. Also, here comes that four. We got to worry about the four, too. So I should probably take care of him now. now Because we know he's coming. So, all right, Mr. Four, get on over here. Uh, yeah, we'll just let him come over here. One. Oh, I can't eat the two, right? I was going to grab this guy first. All right, now we're going to make ourselves an eight and then head over to the east side. Ah, shoot, it comes the six. <laughs> I don't really want the six. Not yet. There's a one. That's not great. Ooh, there's a nine. Okay, see, that's those are the hardest guys because you've got to be the max number to kill them. So, and then they make you an eight. So eating a nine is nice, but Lane is going to start a holy war over Neutron Nurse. I'm going to rebuff him again. <laughs> Uh, that was a quick edit, as I mentioned before, uh, at the wrong time. I really shouldn't have released it then. I actually even left a comment on that because some, somebody left a comment on the Steam uh, um, announcement for that particular patch. And I, uh, not everybody will be on the Discord to have seen how all that went down. So I thought I left it. I'd leave a note about it. But as Terminus, I saw, I haven't actually commented in the channel, but as Terminus said earlier, this actually means good things too because because of that, I'll also be adding... Uh, a new launcher, probably to testing, and actually one other place, and based on Neutron technology, because we've seen how good it can be, right? Oh man, I found the exit already, hell yeah, that's pretty rare, normally I have to explore almost the entire floor, because the exit is like randomly placed somewhere on the other side of the map, um, so often you're exploring the entire floor, that's part of what makes the game, I think, take longer, so I'll jump in, I generally like to go in the next floor with a pretty high number not necessarily the highest though all right here comes a four hunter There's, he's the guy who's going to come straight for us so what we want to make sure is that when he gets to us we're ready for um something else let's see let's uh, eat that and i could actually eat this other four or the hunter as well we can eat a four hunter and become an eight yeah we're an eight we got the hunter I haven't dug into the Steam comment, Gold of Cogmine yet, thanks for me. Oh, God, it's, yeah, I don't. <laughs> the, the recent announcement on the price change is kind of crazy. Um, you know, most people are in support of that. Uh, and uh, But, you know, there's always a few people who will be weird about it. Um, but, yeah, that's on. I, I normally don't even spend much time on Steam, but I do, have, I do need to kind of occasionally reply to people and and help out. I mean, most of the community's not on Steam to begin with. Fortunately, we have Lyra and a few other people on Steam who help out field questions and, and stuff other than just me doing that. But, um, <clears throat> but yeah, uh, Terminus did know about that and mentioned that we're going to get a new, uh, get new stuff. I actually, I shouldn't be taking on this four. God damn it. So that's a bad move. I shouldn't take on the four as an eight. I should just let him, let him stay there for a little while. Uh, here's a two. I'll take a two. You want to try to eat stuff that's close to you um, in number, just so you don't waste your numbers. Take this six. And don't eat numbers until you have to. Uh, here we go. All right, here we go. Ooh, perfect. Eat this and then eat this. Perfect. Take those guys out without having to waste our resources, basically. All these other numbers are our resources. Here comes a one. We'll take him gladly. Become a three. There's another three, but he's a resource, so we'll leave him there. There's a four. Okay, now I gotta take him out, so we're gonna just use one of our little extra green resources here. <clears throat> Mr. Green Resource. Okay, now we're zero. That's pretty pretty bad to be a zero. Don't wanna stay a zero for long. Uh, all right, I'll take uh, 
I don't know if I want to take up one necessarily, but anyway, I'm not going to play the end of this, but I just wanted to kind of introduce it. Oh, so there's a zero here, which are kind of interesting. Zeros, I mean, the main point of a zero is they can help block stuff, I guess. It's kind of interesting to have a zero out there. That's all they do. All right, so where was our entrance out there? Yeah, see, the, the entrances of the exits are pretty randomly placed, and there's a, the map generation is pretty uh, random. It's not bad. I think it's suitable, very suitable for this type of game, the length of corridors and just the number of stuff, but it's... um. <clears throat> There's a number of floors could go down a good bit. It could be dropped down to uh, to 10, probably, and speed up the progression and be great. Eight and a nine, eek. All right. So we want to be an eight, preferably. Oh, no, wait. We don't want to be an eight. Um, oh, sorry, I'm reading chat there. All right, anyway, I don't actually have to kill either of those guys, so the, the smartest thing to do would be to leave them in the corner and hope that the exit isn't over there. And that would be this way to start. All right, there is a three. There's two threes. I want the three on the left. I don't want the green three. I want the three who wants to attack me. He's going another way, though. He's There must be a way around, and he's going to try and go around. But the thing is, once they lose sight of you, they don't come after you. And we found the exit, though, so I don't have to worry about that. Uh, okay, now we can leave. So it's just a question of what number do we want to leave as... I guess we can leave as a 9. I don't really like leaving as a 9, but it's not bad. It's okay. I prefer leaving as something like a 7 or an 8, because then you can eat maybe some smaller stuff before uh, wrapping around. This will, And I guess technically right here, if I wanted to, I could lower my number. But eh, we'll go as a 9. All right, here we go again. So, we're a 9. Yeah, see, as soon as you eat the 3, okay. Um, but uh, middling numbers have some advantages. It's a six, all right? So we could take out the six and then also the two. And we're a seven and the hunter is gone. There's only one hunter per floor. Um, but overall, I mean, other than the blue guys starting to get a little bigger, it doesn't seem like there's a massive difficulty ramp. There's a few more of them and they get a little bigger. The nines appearing is kind of a thing. All right, now I'm a zero. And there's a nine chasing us. But he won't keep chasing. Is going to remember there's a nine down there? He'll stop chasing. All right. Now there's a three over there. And there's a three to the north. Oh, shoot. That would be bad. All right. I hope I don't get cut off here. Okay. No cut off. I'm coming up here to take this three so that I can eat this three. So, uh, anyway, get the whole idea of this game. Um, we'll take that. Now we're nine again. And there's a nine, just perfect timing for another nine. Yes, now we become an eight. That's right, I forgot about that. If you're a nine, you take a nine, then you take the eight as well. Could have done that on the previous map. But, um, cool. Oh, shoot. Whoops, okay. God damn it. <laughs> I did that because I was watching chat. <laughs> uh, I even have a number in chat. Uh, whoops. Anyway, so there, you saw me die. <laughs> first, first death. You're allowed to revive if you want, but... I've just been leaving this game running and just play a level or two every so often just for the heck of it. But uh, that's what I get for streaming it if I was going to plan on winning anyway. But could have won. Um, it was pretty close. Uh, overall, if you just take it slow and leave your resources, it's not too hard. Classic chat. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> I gladly blame ch chat. I, know why I was. I was just moving east, and while I was moving east, I decided to look at chat while doing that. Don't do that while you're playing a game where every move counts. In this game, uh, pretty much every move does count. Uh, as long as you're headed into unknown territory, it's pretty dangerous. But yeah, I just walked into a nine. Oops. Um, anyway, so yeah, uh, that's that game. Uh, it's uh, I linked it above. It's called Rogue Absorb. Pretty interesting to try out. Um, I like thinking about the numbers. It's really simple mechanics overall. It seemed weird at first reading all this in the descriptions, but as soon as you start playing, it becomes pretty natural. So, And we've already gone through several, and there's still more time. So we're going to start up another roguelike in a second. I am going to play. Actually, first thing I'm going to do is drop Runner down and uh, Rogue Absorb. We can close that window now. That's too bad. I was going to go for a win, if only because I think the uh, developer was like mentioned, seemed to have mentioned down there that they're happy if they're if people win or whatever. But I think they really should shorten the game to 10 floors. So that would be better. Uh, 
so yeah speed running through today i mean i guess it's mainly partially because of wins and i guess one didn't work could try to get that working again but mm, i'd rather not because it was <laughs> problematic for too long so what we're going to do again is, is instead is switch to oh wait a minute one second let me switch my window here oh that's the window run okay display runner here we go boom we're going to switch to um let's pick domancer oh, i have nothing showing now boom here we go back to the browser another game did i have a setup for this oh here we go boom we're gonna go to this one after a moment's uh break here for a bit because i've been streaming for a little while we're going to play a game called seven stone sentinels um which looks pretty interesting uh we'll uh let me see submission page i think has some pictures on it so you can look at that while i'm going to put up a uh we're gonna go take a break for just a minute and be back and continue with this All right, we're back. Um, so this was another one that was on my list. Um, uh, Seven Stone Sentinels. Oh, by uh, Renton L. Finch L. I think I'm pretty sure. Uh, I think I've seen Renton, uh, the name in a number of seventy year olds past. So another seasoned seventy year old dev. You know, there's always a number of devs who do seventy year olds every year or at least one every few years and have quite a few under their belt so see them again and again and a lot of them are pretty good i mean you get better with experience um so um yeah another one i was going to play is actually by one of the organizers of the 70 year old event slashy who has made uh made a 70 year old every year i think since the beginning he's, or maybe it wasn't the very very beginning but he's got done like almost 20 of them um and yeah <clears throat> lots and lots of them but uh i was going to i'm planning on playing his uh, later on as well not today, but uh, it's on my list. Uh, Gazarin, hi, is this even once a year? Oh, you're referring... Uh, oh, chat here. Um, is this even once a year? Yeah, the 70 RL. Uh, 70 RL is once a year, every year. It's been, this is the 20th year. It's been going on since 2004, or 2005 was the original one, I guess. 
um, but 20 years. Um, and uh, yeah, every year around the same time, beginning of March or so. Um, and yeah, it just ended uh, like uh, a couple weeks, a week or a couple weeks ago, a week ago. Now a week and a half, uh, so yeah, uh, we're playing post seventy year old versions if they exist, and the uh, the reviewing is still going on. That'll take uh, I think it's it's now, it's currently a quarter done. The the official reviewing I'm doing unofficial reviewing or the official reviewing by people who sign up to be judges and and leave more detailed feedback. Uh, that's going on at the same time right now, and there's there are one quarter done, twenty five percent. Anyone who wants to sign up for that too can sign up to join that reviewing process to make it even faster. Um, if you're interested in that, you can find the links in the Roguelikes subreddit or Roguelikes uh, Roguelike Dev, uh, or the subreddit uh, Roguelike Dev, and it's also on the uh, Roguelikes Discord. Uh, <clears throat> for, I will put up the Discord there. This is uh, put up the link there for anybody who didn't know. This is the Roguelikes and Roguelike Dev um, Discord server, also the main Cogmine Discord server. But that's where all these seventy-year-old devs have been hanging out and sharing their games and also the development process and everything. So this particular one, I don't think Renton hangs out there. I didn't see this at all, but I'm interested in playing it. Uh, but I, yeah, like for example, Runner there, we saw a lot of Runner in uh, in the uh, channel there. People have been playing that and trying it out. So we're going to go to the main game page for this new game here. Oh, also, <laughs> Pagels asked, uh, are you coffee or tea enjoyer? I've always been a tea enjoyer. Every day in the morning I've been drinking tea. Right now I have water only, but... Um, Normally tea, uh, but I ran out of tea recently, and someone had given me a bunch of coffee. I, I never drink coffee in the past. I've literally had almost none my entire life, but the fact that I had ran out of tea and someone had given me coffee meant I started drinking coffee. So <laughs> I, had a, I had a coffee right before the stream today. <laughs> kind of funny, uh, having never been a coffee drinker, but it's, kind of, it's, it's growing on me. It's kind of interesting, uh, having a couple different types of coffee and uh, trying these out. It's interesting, very interesting. So now I guess you could call me both a tea and a coffee drinker. Uh, we're going to, let's see, I have this in my notes. Folks, we need to display capture. Okay, run the, oh, we should read this here. 7 DRL 2024 uh, entry. 7 Stone Sentinels 1.0, made by Renton Owen Finch. Music by Kennedy Kimber Johnson. He's going to have some music on this one. Turn based roguelike where you must face off with the legendary 7 Sentinels in increasingly challenging rounds of combat made with Python and Pi Game. Can you make it to the end? Play in full screen mode. You know you wanna. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yes, we will do that. All right, so movement is numpad or WASD. E. Yeah, we're going to use numpad. Skills are one to five. Selection, enter, spacebar. Uh, we're going to do a question mark for that. 70 year old notes. There are some issues with this in the audio. See so the sound volume. Okay, the, the sound and volume option sliders don't work on the web version. Oh, there's a download for this? Oh, oh well, it doesn't look like there's a download for this, but uh, uh, maybe they have a download and they haven't provided it yet. But if any drugs judges are having trouble, yeah, please contact me. Uh, with your OS version, I can try and get you a build for your ASAP. Yeah, because um, some people are definitely willing to do uh, go the extra mile so that you know reviewers can have uh, the best experience or any experience in the case of something that can't run uh, during the event. Okay, and then we're using they're using their uh, existing WIP engine called uh, RLE, uh, RL Engine. Yeah, some of the features they provided before the jam. So they're kind of disclosing what they had before the jam from their engine, which is pretty common in a roguelike. I mean, I've done that with my own roguelikes. I participated in 70 year twice before, and in both cases I was using basing it on my previous engine and even a portion of the previous game stuff, but turning it into something new. So uh, uh, some people on their itch page will also declare that, which is uh, pretty common to do. All right, so looks like we're ready to start this. Rare kids lower unlocked, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Uh-huh. But now I'm just drinking water. <laughs> Don't want to drink too much. I drank too much tea a little while back. I, I learned the fact that if you drink too much tea, uh, eyelids can start, like, uh, having spasms. That started happening. I was like, okay, I have too much tea. <laughs> Had to cut back on the tea. Uh, display capture. Boom. Please work. Are you not working for some reason? Don't tell me you're going to do... Okay, there it is. Woo! Okay, that took a little while. I was... It's working! Yes! No problems! All right. Let me... I'm going to up the audio a little bit on this one. Uh, tell me if you... Tell me if the background audio is a little low or high. 
Um, I think it might be about right now. What? <laughs> Plexia, bro, my eyelids do that all the time and I don't even drink that much tea. <laughs> uh, I, I, it's, I found out it was directly connected. Um, because I used to drink only, like, one... I drink several cups using one tea bag in the morning all day, and then I switched to doing two, one in the morning and one at noon. And within a few weeks of that, uh, I started having that eyelid issue. And <laughs> I read about, started researching it, and I realized it could be because of too much caffeine. And so I stopped for some weeks, and after a couple weeks, it went away. I was like, yes, figure that out. So now I know I have to limit that. But, you know, everybody's different in what they can absorb. All right, let's see. How does this work here? Okay, we're in keyboard here. There's an encyclopedia. Sentinels. Oh. Necromage. I grind my coffee every day with a wooden crank wheel and mocha pot. I'm definitely addicted. <laughs> oh, really? Had the eyelid thing for a while too? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, tea does it. It's just a caffeine thing. And technically tea, I guess, well, the tea I used to drink also, or I, I generally drink when I have it. It has more caffeine than coffee as well. But um, yeah, I learned that that's related. And uh, my mom is like, Duh, didn't you know that? I'm like, no, I don't, I don't really don't drink that much caffeine. All right, so yeah, Necromage. Uh, these are so summons undead soldiers to fight against you. Hmm. Spirits around your title, title, title inflict haunt. All right, so oh, I have to actually select here. These, yeah, these are the different enemies we're going to go up against, I guess. We can see them all. Sharpshooter. All right, so I like this. This kind of uh, roguelike is nice. Um, when you have uh, different, sorry, adjust the volume again. Uh, it's nice when you have a di um, you know very very clearly enemies with different clearly different skills. Um, it's a lot better than just you know stats and hack and slash. So that those I generally there's you know there's a number of those seven DRLs each year, and I mean that, that's I, I generally don't I won't stream uh, that sort of seven DRL, but it looked like this one had some more interesting stuff in it. So. But I have not actually played to see how this works out. All right, I'm not going to read all this right now because I won't remember it anyway. But relics, oh, oh, okay, different items you can get, I guess. Old man's relics, uh, broken Laramar pendant, left half, set bonus, max HP plus two. Oh, you can get both of these. Ox head mask, increase all your knockback effects. All right, so yeah, this is cool. Lots of different effects we can get. I like it. Seems nice. A sculpted muse. Counterattacks with shock when you have shield. <laughs> okay. Escape. Nope. Nope. Don't press escape when you're in a full screen mode. <laughs> I hate how you, that you can't use an actual escape key when you're in full screen in the browser. It's kind of annoying that you can't do that in these games. I mean, especially because the games also tend to sh tell you that you can use escape. Credits. That's a lot of cool credits. Um, yeah, got, those are the, got the main ones that were listed on there. Graphics and animation. So, oh, these, these are actually the graphics and stuff for this came from Oryx as well. Oh, but, but they've made some other additions of their own. Hmm. Uh, it's pretty annoying, but hey, wait a minute. Renton's here in the chat. <laughs> okay, Renton. Welcome. Um, did you get pinged or were you here already? I didn't know if you'd, uh, I didn't know if I could, should, could or should get in touch with you beforehand. The art looks awesome though. Yeah, that was really attractive for this game. So you can use backspace as well. Perfect. I backspace out of that. Excellent. I like the art. And yeah, I love this title page too. I am, I'm a sucker for plum blossoms. These, and this is an awesome, uh, front page here. Oh, okay. Oh, cool. All right. Caught the end of runner as well. All right. Um, yeah, I like the art. Uh, really good graphical presentations and the colors. Um, nice color choice. Um, but yeah, Plum Blossom's looking pretty good there. Hmm. All right, uh, settings, checking settings. Okay, you can set individual volumes, which we read on the page. Might not work. Instructions. Here we go. There's instructions. The Seven Sentinels. Here's some more art for us. Hmm. Pretty. I guess those are the Seven Sentinels there. I count seven. Hmm. The seven sentinels await your arrival. Defeat all of your opponents to advance each round. Enemies will increase in strength or quantity each round. Control the battlefield with your mobility and wits and strike when the time is right. Can you discover the secret of the stone sentinels? Okay, space bar. Movement. All right, that's the description we saw on the main page. It seems pretty clear. Um, oh, oh, one interesting piece of information we need to know. Skills are free actions that don't move time. Okay, so skills are free. And uh, here is also, yeah, moving takes one action. Waiting... 
Hmm. Hmm. It looks like there's a mistake there under the waiting. It should be waiting takes one action to move time forward, not moving. Looks like you can copy paste there. <laughs> can change that. Uh, alternative, you can use spacebar. So yeah, we'll use num num five used to that. <laughs> yes, typo. <laughs> How do you come up with Girthquaker? <laughs> that that's a pretty cool name. <laughs> <laughs> Girth Quaker. <laughs> uh, interface enemy HP is uh, visible as red ticks in the bottom left. Okay. Enemy delay is visible as circles in the bottom right. The number of delay ticks denotes in how many turns they will perform an action. If there are no ticks, then prepare, be prepared for next attack next turn. So with two ticks, that means the two, that means the third turn. You will always attack first. Enemies will sometimes use special abilities, a gray aura. Some abilities take multiple turns, denoted by a blue aura. The blue tiles will indicate the area this ability will affect. I guess that's why they're hexes, is a hex game? Or no, I guess it's not, because we're using numpad, we'll see. Striking a channeling enemy will disrupt the ability. <clears throat> All right, player skills, Halber uh, the regular halberd. All right, we've got attacks for one damage in a piercing line of range two. Enemies in range are afflicted with shock status. Dash, safely dash to any tile within four tile range. Stomp, knocks back enemies within range two by one tile. I guess that's all enemies in all directions then. Hmm. Move everybody back. Gain one stack of shield. I guess stomp might, no, oh, it only knocks back though. It doesn't take damage. I was gonna say, could you use that to interrupt somebody's attack? Just already starting to think possibilities here. Bulwark, gain one stack of shield. This will protect you from all damage and status effects for one turn. Shard, shoot a ranged ice shard to a free tile with a range four. Enemies within a range of two of the blast gain freeze. And freeze means <clears throat> delay increased by number of freeze counters. Okay, so, right, the delay until their next turn or whatever. Um, inflicts one damage after five turns for poison. Shock, propagates attacks to all adjacent enemies. So, like, if you hit an enemy that has shock, it hits all the enemies next to them, I guess. Something like that. Take no damage while shield counters are active. Haunt. Increase cooldown of skills already on cooldown. Power. Deal plus one damage next turn. Okay. So that is the basic. I'm not, I'm not going to remember all that. But we're going to start <clears throat> and uh, learn it also by playing. Uh, here it goes. Oh, okay. It's, it actually shows you this stuff when you start the game as well. <laughs> okay. I guess the star one is us. Um, cool. I like the uh, the music too. This is good. Um, was this? Uh, can everybody else here actually hear the music background? Okay, more or less. <clears throat> Just making sure because it's 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 good and a nice atmosphere. But no one had commented on it yet. Um, just wanted to make sure it wasn't set too low. It's a it's a little quiet. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll put it up a bit then. Always hard to tell exactly where the different games uh, should be, even though I'm watching it on there. So maybe now it's a little better. All right. Okay. Uh, but yeah, uh, good music. I like the I like this jam. Okay. So where are we at? Perfect for you. All right. Cool. Thanks. I need some feedback on that from someone who's listening from the other side because it'll be a little different for me um, here. But I can just watch the levels and see what it kind of looks like. Okay, so those are our abilities down there. I already kind of, okay, I kind of general idea of remember what they are. Okay, so we can move with numpad here. I wonder if I need numlock on or not. I'm gonna turn numlock off real quick. Okay, so we've got this one guy to the southeast, two hits and four hit points on the guy to the northwest who has two turns until so he could do anything. I am going to, all right, looks like I maybe need numlock on. No, wait. Wait, maybe I, am I clicked into the window? Okay, there we go. I have numlock on and I'm clicked into the window. Okay, so like if I hit one here, okay, it highlights the direction here. All right, wait a minute, didn't we have some kind of spear attack or whatever? Can I do a two? No. Escape. Wait, I, I can't press escape. I can do backspace. That's right. Whew. Okay, this is the dash ability. This is the stomp ability that would slow him down. Wait, doesn't this actually... Oh, this would actually hit him too, though? No? Um, so, enter to confirm. Yeah. Okay, that worked. Oh, got nice effects, and he's all... All right, he's shocked now. We can see the effect on him with some lightning going on there. And... 
Oh, using abilities is free. That's right. So I can actually... Oh, but in the cooldown is 10. So if I can attack... If I wait for him here, will he attack me? No. All right, we killed him. I just waited and he moved up. I don't know if they're going to use abilities or not. Oh, now I can see. I had my cursor on the other screen. That's why it wasn't working. I had uh, ones appearing in the chat over there. All right, so there's, there's a bigger dude coming from the northwest here. Let's figure out how to take care of this guy. So uh, that's on cooldown. That's cooldown of 10. I guess there's... I wonder if there's different cooldowns for different things. I guess we'll find out soon. Hmm... Oh, it takes... Alright, so he's slower. Is he not doing anything? He's just slow to move. Alright. Alright, now we've learned that this guy's just too slow. Quick, over here, come with me before they return. My shop is a safe haven in these dark lands. Alright. Enter. Round one. We're incomplete. Plus one diamond star gem thingy. Um, a no hit bonus. Another plus one. Okay, we got two gems. Ah, this is where we get, oh, this is where we pick up items. All right, the old man will replenish his supplies. So in between maps, we get to go to this old dude's shop. That's why it was. That's why the item list that we saw in the encyclopedia was called old man's stuff, whatever it was. <laughs> the old man will replenish his supplies. Okay, that's I guess if we buy stuff, you have to spend a gem to get him to get new stuff, or even maybe change the stuff he has. Rest of the end to refill HP. We have ten currently. Leave the shop. Return to the battlefield. So anyway, two two gems for this pendant gives us max HP. Counter attacks with shock when you have shield. That seems actually kind of nice. And reduces cast cooldown of shard by minus two. Hmm. All seem fairly good. I like that. I, I like it when there's no obvious choice. That's that's always a good thing. Good sign in uh, the balance. And these all seem like they're useful in their own way. So it depends basically then on strategy. Um, you can see the advantage of going for this and getting for another uh, the other half. If but it has to appear at some point for us to get that. And we looked at the encyclopedia, which shows that that's, that there's um, a rather large pool of items. It's not in actually count, but I don't know, maybe something like twenty five um, or more. And if that's true, and we go through about if we have to kill this number of sentinels and each time there's only three items and they're not even different each time or maybe they are i don't know the difference but i'm just curious how the likelihood that we'd actually even get the other one would be just something to think about when you have uh, that option at hand uh i kind of like this idea but i also kind of want to go on the offensive i'm just going to take this pendant here the right half of the pendant all right so yeah that disappears and we have zero gems so now we can leave oh it didn't actually give us the new hp for that though we have to max it up on our own all right, and then we have new, new enemy down there. Do I, can we get info on these by cursor? No, nothing. No other way to get info on them. You have to use the encyclopedia, I guess, for that. <clears throat> we'll find out. Grasley learned them, I guess. We know that guy to the southwest of us, further southwest in the middle there, is uh, is a slowpoke and not not really to be feared. It seems as long as there's no one else around. So we can maybe this person. I don't know what they're gonna do. They probably have abilities. It'd be nice to look at the encyclopedia, but we're gonna try some other stuff with this. Then we could do. I could actually freeze them. Wait, is this gonna freeze? Oh, it freezes everybody in that area too. Yeah. All right. So I can share. I can. I guess I can shoot past this person. Freeze them. Kill them. Okay, now we got an idea of what that is. And it also shows us that the cooldown on that was 10 too. So the cooldown on all items might be 10 by default. Whoa, at least a little frozen ball left over there. What the heck? Oh, you can use back... Okay, thanks for that tip. That's actually a good tip. Um, you can press backspace to bring up the menu and see the encyclopedia mid-game. That's kind of something I'm always afraid of doing, messing stuff up. <laughs> Especially in a 7 DRL, but it's nice to know that's possible then. Backspace to access this. Perfect. Get straight to the... Basically, you get our... our yeah, there's a nice escape pause menu here for us. So we can actually come in and check that out. Um, and look at the list of sentinels. Uh, that person... 
here we go. Um, so apparently they move every turn. HP2 spawns an orb which casts tracking flames. Wow, that sounds dangerous. They didn't use that though. Hmm. Channel skill, large area of effect damage on every other tile. Hmm, I wonder why they didn't use that and it seems dangerous. <laughs> All right, so yeah, backspace is good to get it back. What is that ice ball just gonna sit there forever now? All right, so we can we know we can safely take this last guy out because he's just a slowpoke. Be wary of the necromage's melee attack. It will quickly drain you of your energy and thus your will to live. Okay. I'm, I'm okay now. No hit bonus plus one. Okay. I like the uh, simple thing here. For completing a round, you get one. For not getting hit, you get another bonus. So, of course, that also can kind of compound on itself there. The more You get more and more powerful because you have uh, these extra bonuses from early on. Okay. So, the Whispering Bamboo Flute. Um, so, it seems like uh, we're assuming all items are two. And, oh, and we've also learned now that, yeah, the old man does changes items every time so the main use for this would be if you've saved up gems and you want him to replace this immediately to get a different list i guess if you're looking for something specific maybe or you somehow get more gems who knows so anyway this flute reduces cast cooldown of halberd by two or stomp so a number of things is reducing cooldowns which seems like it's probably important in the long term shock adjacent tiles of an enemy killed by the halberd I'm still not 100% uh, clear on how the advantages also of some of these extra effects, having not used them before anyway. But overall, it's pretty clear, and I, I could also become uh, more familiar with it by looking at all the stuff again. But I uh, prefer to do it gradually through the experience, rather than trying to read every and remember all the details. Just have a general idea is good enough. So we either can do uh, mm, Halberd by two seems kind of nice. Get a attack someone from a range and I guess even hit two people at once if it comes to that. This is also seems decent. It's a combination thing. You have to have the Halberd left in order to use that. I, start, I think you should probably start reducing cooldowns. This one might be kind of nice. Uh, stomp. What was that? It's... I forget what it exactly does. It doesn't stop them, but it, uh... uh haven't had a chance to use it yet. <clears throat> Let's see. Oh, it pushes them back, I think it was. Yeah. I think it's knocked back for everybody around you. you could, so you could reduce that cooldown. Which, tactically speaking, would allow us, I guess, if you're getting more surrounded, to uh, focus on a particular enemy uh, to one side of you is an option given by that. Hmm. Depends on... Uh, so I don't know the, uh, how many enemies or what kinds of stuff we'll be facing later, so it's hard to tell how valuable it is, but I'm going to take that one. Also, one of these days we'll refill our HP, but... Um, this is repeat refills you to full, so might as well just wait on that. Alright, this is getting more complicated. Alright, there's a part, new dude to the south there. Also, the guy to the southeast, I don't, I don't recognize him. I'd have to look it up and see what they can do, but I think we'll just see what happens and might try some other abilities this time too boom nice uh oh they're doing, doing their ability thing. Hmm. I was hoping they'd approach me, but they're not approaching. They're... Does, so wait, did they actually use their ability? No. Just getting ready to. I'm going to wait one turn and see what happens here. Oh shoot, what's this dude doing? It's 
Sorry, just checking here real quick. Chat just disconnected me for a second. Seems like it's going okay though. All right. Um. Whoa. This guy's. Hmm. One second. Checking the other window there. Okay, that's good. All right. Um. What is? What is that guy capable? I probably want to check into this dude. Uh, Sentinels, where are you, man? Apothecary, no. Oh, this guy's actually coming. Who's his geomancer? Heals friendly allies and cures status effects. Large area effect, poison blast at your tile. Ooh. All right, and this other dude is a geomancer. Spawns boulders to block your movement. Explodes boulders across a pattern. Oh, shoot. Now I kind of want to be able to fly away from this area. <laughs> All right, so anyway, we can interrupt him by attacking him, supposedly, as well. And I, I guess he's the one who is doing this. All right, there's another person. That, oh, wait. No, 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 wait. Is it this guy to the southeast? Oh, it's a poison guy, isn't he? Yeah, that was the poison guy. I'm pretty sure. Oh, also, what's that? There's this thing in the bottom right corner of the map. Huh. Funky little... That's not on the list, is it? What even is that? Yeah, I mean, that's not a sentinel or whatever. Something else. All right. Um, so I guess the blue over there is this dude casting here, and we're getting attacked from in front. So the, uh, I can't get away from that. Might take a hit here. Or actually, no. I mean, we can shield ourselves real quick just to see. Let's see what that does. Blocks everything. Let's see what happens. And use this opportunity. I love how we can... I like how abilities are free. They have a long cooldown, but they're also free. Um, I like that being separate from moves. I can also use this opportunity to attack. How come I got to attack and nothing happened? Also, I still have a shield. Do I keep... How long does that stay? Oh, does it... How long does that stay there? Now I'm poisoned anyway. <laughs> huh. Okay, now there's an ability... The thing to the far bottom right is doing an ability sort of thing. Hmm. Poisoned. So that's we have a poison counter now on top of our health up there, which has us to uh, it's a on five turns we'll take damage, and I guess that continues. I'm just gonna kill this person point blank, and I don't know what that ability is doing on doing down there. Oh. All right. So is it targeting us? But if we move, do we not get targeted or not? Okay, yeah. That's that thing that the southeast was targeting us. Wow, and it just disappeared. Okay, interesting. Alright, took damage from the poison, and once you take that, it goes away. Wow, we're down to five health now. Oof. <laughs> Spinning. Thing in the bottom right is the orb that gets spawned by the pink caster lady. Oh, way down there? <laughs> a treasure chest? Wait a minute. Uh, do I get that for free if I win, or do I have to pick it up first? That I don't know. It makes me want to go pick it up before I kill this guy, because I was about to kill this guy. <laughs> But that makes it a little harder. He's slow though, so it's not a huge deal, but... Okay, yeah, it looks like I do have to actually take it out. Alright, there we go. Uh-oh. Oh, oh did he, he use some ability? I should probably check what his ability is. What was his ability again? He's the apothecary. Ah, heals and cures status effects. Also the poison blast. Okay. Ah, oh, shoot. Press the wrong button. God damn it. I pressed escape. Too used to pressing escape. Oh, well. Easy to get back in at least. Okay. Um, okay. So I guess he was just trying to heal himself. Which didn't help him. But that also might mean he's now going to switch back to his other ability. Or they have like rotating abilities. It's a bit crowded to my shop with all the items I've found, but remember, you break it, you bought it. All right, get some more items. Oh, failed the no-hit bonus. Big, in a big way, but we got the chest. Huh. 
All right, so that's at least there's another way to get another one there. Would have been nice to have a third. Okay, nine-tailed fox veil. Polarity bangle inflicts shock on all enemies you dash through. Oh, dash through enemies? Huh. Uh, reduce cast cooldown. I haven't seen a whole lot of enemies near each other yet. That might be, come into play more in later rounds, perhaps, because that seems to be where shock comes uh, becomes more useful. Tempest wind chime stomp. Stomp also inflicts freeze plus one. Ooh. Um, also, I kind of need, unfortunately, I kind of need to rest. I wish I had gotten a third gem, but if I had, I wouldn't need to rest anyway. So I mean, if I rest, though, I can't take another thing. But having only five hit points seems dangerous. So I think I'm going to have to rest. That'll be the safer way to play this. Now I get only one gem left, so I'm going to return to the battlefield and have to skip all that stuff. Yo, here come some more enemies. Overall, I, I like the uh, tactical options. I guess one of the bigger problems is learning what all the enemies do and having an easy way to do that. But there are only a, there's only a small number of them, so after a few playthroughs, you kind of get a, a pretty clear picture of that. And it's only adding you know, one or two per map, but the progression is good. It's not slow, um, which is nice. All right, so now there's a sharpshooter down there. Remember that name. He's going to have something new. He moves, uh, he's got poison, poison shot, great on a clear straight line of sight so all right so you kind of want to block his line of sight range shot on all tiles from his to yours hmm. and who's that lady the one with the big star gemini that one spawns a clone to swap places with a weak sentinel Spawns many shadow clones of himself. Oh god, <laughs> sounds like someone you want to kill before too long. <laughs> hmm, but yeah, you can see the gradually growing number of enemies, that's for sure. Oh shoot, I thought I was the guy in the north. Oh god. <laughs> Alright, that totally screwed me up. I, I completely thought I was the guy in the middle, I forgot where I was. Ah, shoot. I, I assumed I'd started in the middle, I was dumb. Alright, just wasted a hit. Oh, what a waste. Um, that's okay. Just figuring out the mechanics first run anyway. But yeah, I forgot which guy I was. I was like, who's that guy down there? Is that I must have seen that enemy before. No, that's me. <laughs> Should know that. Also, you can know that because you don't have the little health pips on you. That's an easier way to remember that. Uh, that's unfortunate. Okay, then. Um... If I had the shock thing, that would be nice. Oh, no, I guess it wouldn't have helped too much, but... Hmm. Oh, left side. I was having trouble doing that for a second there. Oh, wait, this was the lady I wanted to kill, though, more. Hmm, I'm gonna take damage either way. Mr. Geomancer over there. Damn. If only I hadn't taken that first hit unnecessarily. Kind of a waste of hit points. Well, one hit point and really more, more wasteful was the chance of uh, taking these guys out. But, you know, uh, it does... I think it's similar to Runner, which we played uh, just there. Um, I think it's advantageous to use your abilities as soon as possible, right? Um, uh, because then you have a chance for them all to cool down and use them again on further enemies. You don't want to save them up at all. Try and use them quickly. All right, so next thing, let's see, we've got to freeze here. Uh, I can freeze this guy next to me. Actually, no, it freezes a large area, but that also freeze me. That would be interesting. <laughs> I could just take a hit then. Uh, okay, who's doing that one? Alright, I guess that's that guy to the southeast. He's gonna make stuff happen. And it's next turn immediately. He's channeling it. 
All right, so gray means they use their ability already, and blue means they're about to in the next turn. This is kind of a funny thing to do, but I'm going to dash straight south. Just so that I could be out of his range, because it's free, and kill his friend. There we go. Oh, a chest appeared. A wild chest appears. Okay. Hmm, that guy's kind of annoying to leave out there doing all his stuff, though. <laughs> Especially as he can, ca he can cast. Uh, how, I wonder how what their range is on these kinds of things. It seems like almost anywhere. Because I kind of want to go for the chest now, too. We're going to need that. One for win and one because we definitely took damage. So we need one for the win and one for the chest. Then we can get up to three gems. Whoa. Oh, that, that that came in closer than I expected. Um, it's okay. We've got abilities to use. Unfortunately, I can't actually get her right away. Hey there, dude. Welcome to the party. The Gemini's shadows can quickly surround you, but remember, they are just illusions. Even a small disturbance can dispel shadows. Ah, the Gemini? Yeah. Killed that one so fast, they didn't have a chance to do any of that. <laughs> Even a small disturbance. I wonder what that means, uh, if that means like you can move through them and then they disappear even? Or something like that. All right, got a plus two for that at least. Didn't get the no-hit bonus. But now we have three gems to play with, if I needed health. But I think we're not going to need health this time. We'll save that one extra uh, for later. Unless, technically, we could use the opportunity to reshuffle if we didn't want these particular things. Haunted Visage. All right, I've uh, got here a uh, melee attack causes knockback. Huh. That seems like it could be a plus and a minus. I do really like my melee attacks, though. But, hmm, I wonder. Uh, gain one extra stack of shield when using Bulwark. Uh, oh, wow. Two, you'd get double shield, and I guess, does the shield last until you get hit? Um, like, you can do it even... Actually, no. One extra stack. I mean, if you can stack it, does that mean it lasts for two turns? Or, when you do a shield, can you, do you just keep it? Because that doesn't seem like it would make sense. If so, you would almost do a shield immediately every, every run, because it cools down, right? So, I'm guessing it would time out. Not sure about that one. That would seem like overpowered if you, or also kind of more just an optimal way to play if you get to keep the shield until you get hit. Put it up as soon as you can. I've been putting it up when I need it. <clears throat> um, hmm. And the last one here, gain max uh, HP plus one for each gem you have left after purchase. Does that mean after you purchase this one thing? That's actually a pretty interesting thing, uh, idea. Or is it every time afterwards? Every time you make a purchase? Yeah, I wonder. Can't quite tell. But, uh, I mean, obviously the game is limiting itself to uh, one short sentence that fits in the space for uh, descriptions. So that games that do that tend to leave, you know, you end up leaving out, unnecessarily leaving out uh, answers to a few smaller questions like that. Um, one example that I'm always reminded of in that sense is uh, Rift Wizard. Rift Wizard is an awesome game, but when you, know, you read a lot of the descriptions, they have to fit in the, uh, the window on the right side, and a lot of them leave mechanical details out that sometimes can be pretty important, actually. Um, but there's just not enough room to put them there. I mean, you, that's where you have to start evolving into another kind of UI to get extra information somehow. 
or rely on outside sources or just experience, but it's kind of unfortunate, I guess. Uh, but it's also nice when you can give the all the like you know a good 80 90 percent of the main mechanics in just a very short sentence it makes it much easier to at least get into things but then when you're trying to play optimally you look at it differently <laughs> um but yeah i like um <clears throat> overall this is uh done well enough in that regard usually pretty clear um i'm quite interested in this um this, if I knew quite how that worked, I, this would maybe even be preferable to this. The knockback, though, is quite good because if you're if you're going one on one, forcing you just then you easy, more easily force the enemy to uh, uh, have to come back to you when you're just doing a regular attack. Uh, so one on ones become a lot easier, but it does change the movement around. Especially, actually, well, see, this actually works against the tactic I've been using, which is to use special abilities to, like, slow people down and try and hit them right in front of me multiple times if I can. But I'm also using the abilities for that, so I don't know, maybe this could be good. Hmm, hard to say. It depends on also the, what kinds of uh, enemies we're going to go up against as well. Yeah, <laughs> Renton says, fitting description of small place, definitely an art form in itself. Yeah. Yep, um, I, I, you know, I have to deal with the same uh, developing uh, my own roguelikes and the idea is, um, you know, keep rereading it. Which words don't you need? Uh, which words uh, can you change to something else to have the same meaning? You know, just try and fit uh, as much meaning into as few words as possible without leaving the loopholes for what people have to guess is there. Um, that's also one of the reasons that I use scientific writing style for... I mean, part of the reason is because it's also in theme, but I use scientific writing style for Cogmind, which leaves out articles in most cases. Anytime it's not necessary, and a lot of times articles aren't necessary, um, you can leave stuff like that out. It saves room uh, and other things like that. There's just a lot of words you can cut and have the exact same meaning, and then you can fit more meaning into the same space. But anyway, uh, let's get back to the actual playing here. All right, so melee attack causes no. Um, really, this uh, changes up strategy enough that I'm wondering if I should take this instead um, and see how that works out. And I pay, pay a little more close attention to how the shield works. But I guess that would at least mean two in a row, two blocks in a row, even if it does time out. Gain max HP plus one for your gym. Yeah, I'm not going to get that one, but it would be. It's between these two basically. Um, and I, this one actually seems really good. Because then I don't have to move, do as much movement. But I'm just afraid it might have negative impact on some of the tactics. Moving things around is a big part of uh, tactics. And letting them move themselves as well. Hmm. I kind of... its In some ways it's nice to know that the enemy will be in the exact same spot after you hit them. Tough call, tough call. Hmm... Because then, yeah, one of the things about it is if you have multiple enemies coming at you, if you're knocking one back, then it allows enemies that were originally at different distances from you to sort of to start to get uh, the same distance from you. And you want to funnel enemies, so that actually makes it more dangerous in a way. Whereas, otherwise, you can hit someone and maybe run and, and draw enemies in a line. But this starts putting enemies closer together. So that works against that strategy. So I'm going to take this one. All right, that answers that. Leave the shop. Is there a way to see my list of abilities? Relics. Does it show the relics I have? Yeah. Wait, what are these? Oh, yeah, there we go. All right, we've got our list of relics here and what we have and what we haven't seen yet. So some of these will start, if I read through all these, it'll start to have more. We'll have to, it'll mean more now that we've started to play. All cooldowns minus one for each two enemies you dash through. <laughs> Pagoda Festival Lantern. <laughs> I like these uh, items too and the item names. It's cool. A lot of dashing extra stuff. Mm. Increased dash range by two tiles. Pale stuffed rabbit. <laughs> awesome. Rancid plum blind. Poison last enemy in a dash if you passed at least two. Huh. Interesting. There's a lot of cool ideas in here. Manual of Siege Defense. <laughs> Very awesome. Uh, okay, so let's see. We remind ourselves here. We've got extra shielding. Stomp cools down faster. And we've got half of this pendant. Mm -hmm. What is this? Spirit Fox Mask. Halberd has only cooldown of one when it destroys a chest. Oh, specifically. Huh. 
All right. Anyway, so yeah, we had to have a way to see these things and what we have. That's cool. Check out our list there. Why waste time? Say a lot word, but few word do trick. There you go. <laughs> <clears throat> okay, now I'm gonna remember which one I am. I'm the one without the pips up there in the north. <laughs> All right, now I know which one I am. And then, yeah, there's definitely a lot more enemies out there. So, just gonna gotta get a general direction going. It's gonna get. Oh, also, this guy off to the far left. Have we seen him before? Uh, was he, I think, or was he one of the first guys? I think he was one of the first guys. Sentinels. He's the uh, Girthquaker, was he? Yeah. Dashes to a child adjacent to you. Large area of effect damage from his tile. Moves every three turns. Pretty slower. Pretty slow. I'm sorry, dude. Anyway. Okay. Haven't actually had to deal with his abilities yet, though. Hmm. Hmm. Well, at least we're close to this enemy to the east, which is the one that I want to kill the fastest. At least that seems preferable. But, um, two spaces away, it makes it a little harder. I can only hit them with a halberd, and then they can do what they want to do. Force them to come to us. Yes. Okay. Now, fun guys to the south. Guy to the west is easy to kill as long as he's alone. Geomancer is actually pretty annoying. The guy to the south. He's um, in the long term just because of his abilities. Can see we're dashing here with an extra effect on it would be pretty nice. Uh, to reposition. I'm assuming we can't go through the water. Yes, we can't go through the water. Making sure that was a blocked tile. <clears throat> no, 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 waters, trees, anything occupied by something other than grass, not movable. Don't want to really get locked up in the corner, but. Oh, yeah, he did an ability thing. That's his ability. <laughs> can basically teleport to you. All right. Um, I'm going to say now is a good time to test out our new shield. Shielded. All right, you can see in the top right we have a two there. Hit this guy. Oh, shoot. What is she doing? All right, haven't seen this one. All right, so I guess we, wait, did we lose one shield? We didn't lose one shield because we got hit. Or was that a time thing? Sentinels, all right. Um, that was her, right? Spawns an orb which cash a large area of effect damage over every on every other tile. So every other tile means every other row or perhaps column <clears throat> instead of tile. Every other tile sounded more uh, like all tiles or something like that. Every other, I guess, so it means every other row. Um, in this case, maybe it could also be every, every other column, but uh, a clearer description there. Uh, okay, so yeah, we don't really want to stay here and... Wait, does that, is that going to hit our friends too? That's all uh, would be nice. <laughs> Anyway, forcing our movement. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to move southeast, and that's going to tell us the answer to the other question about the mechanics is whether or not this shield is just going to disappear on its own, which I guess we'll find out. But I need to move out of the way. Dashing is another option, but I don't have anywhere I want to dash to just yet. I'm going to move there. And it. she did not hurt her friends with that. We do have the sh Oh, wait. Our shield says zero on it now but it's still glowing all right and so that guy to the north is going to stomp right i always have to come back here and check girth quaker here um <clears throat> large area of effect damage from his tile so okay very more specifically that is just an aoe damage effect and i can't hit him right now right now would be a perfect time to use the halberd to hit him 
and it disrupt that and then our shield which supposedly we still have even though it's marked zero i guess that's turned left or something uh, we still have the shield and we could uh, block the attack from the guy to the northwest and then like uh just play from there but can i freeze the guy and that'll also work i don't really want to use freeze right now but maybe we'll reposition instead dash i can't dash to any great locations but this isn't a bad location Now I get to also see, I'm going to right, move south, there we go. Okay, so yeah, our shield disappeared on its own on its timer, so. Still going good though. Mm, shoot. I'd like to not get hit just for the bonus, but mm, I don't know how reasonable it is to try that. Because if I wanted to, I could uh, technically freeze this lady. Maybe I'll freeze her. I can't. I, I can't target that spot. I can target this spot though. It's kind of interesting having that orb left there, and I guess that means no one can move into that space. Okay. Mainly this Geomancer guy is a little problematic, if only because he doesn't slow down. But what we can do now is kind of move back. Oh, actually, I can kill him now. And hurt his friend, so that's good. Oh yeah, we saw the shock effect there too. It shocked the guy behind him and uh, he took extra damage there and is now dead. <laughs> All right, so that is working out. Um, damn, okay. <laughs> I was waiting for him to approach me. He did not approach. He summoned more enemies. Bastard. <laughs> but there's a chest now. There we go. I used that opportunity to separate them. And we already got the chest this time. Oh, a customer, come have a look at my wares. Only the finest. Hey, don't you recognize me? <laughs> oh, yeah, I managed to not get hit that time. Plus three. Pretty nice. Round five. Also, it's round zero five. Was that for uh, how many rounds are there? I mean, it's seven Sentinels. Does that mean there's actually seven rounds, or how does this work? I'm curious because it's rounds zero five. Does that mean there can be ten or more? Maybe I didn't pay attention to the itch page and it's mentioned or somewhere else in the in instructions, but or was it zero five simply to match the gems zero four counter, which would make sense if for just aesthetic reasons, but um, does make me curious whether it goes double digits or not. All uh, right, so there's the doll gain plus uh, HP plus one at the start of each round. So I guess that's each new round and HP plus ones means current HP. So basically it's healing. That's a nice thing to have early on, I guess. All cooldowns, minus one for each two enemies you dash through. Huh. 
That's kind of cool, actually, if you're dashing through stuff. Uh, not doing that a whole lot. Obviously, you can do it more if you've got some of these, but cooldowns minus one is kind of nice. This is kind of a mid-battle, late-battle thing. Uh, shock adjacent tiles of an enemy killed by Halberd. Right, the Moonstone Mirror. Hmm. Also, I can actually get two things. I have four gems now. Sheesh. I think I'm going to go for this. And I'm going to save the rest. I'm kind of curious just how much more difficult it will get. But... Okay. Um... Fun time's coming. Uh, and I hate there's that, there's that other lady I want to kill fast right there. Also, there's a sharpshooter. Does he have... Can he do that from... I don't know what his line of sight is kind of like, though. Anyway, I'm going to attack this guy and just wait one turn and find out. I don't know what his range is on his ability. Oh, shoot. This is kind of nice, actually. I can hit both of these people. Mmm, I like that. Uh, overall, a nice uh, different uh, set of abilities for figuring out how to deal with stuff. Oh, and you can see we've got plus one HP up there. Yep, so that did happen once when we came into the new map here. Mm, so I'm thinking of hitting... I definitely want to use the uh, Halberd here uh, on the two to the right. Just thinking of the order in which to do these things. Uh, Halberd followed by... Uh, then we could do Knockback or Shield. Either one could work well, I think. <clears throat> See, like right here, if I do a shield, then I can attack the guy to the right with the melee attack. Oh, that killed all of them. Oh, shoot! No way! That was a double! <laughs> He, he took diagonal damage from the other lady too, so I, heard, I shocked the, both of them, and then the damage from killing one killed the guy next to him, and then because both of them died, they each did one damage to the guy to the north. I thought the guy to the north, uh, was a Geomancer guy, would have still had a, one, a, a hit point left. I didn't know that a shock also works diagonally. Well, that's actually really good. That is quite powerful. Now we have an extra shield that I didn't need to use, but that's okay. We can, I guess, press forward here. Kind of want to just take this lady out as fast as possible. But if I press forward... Mm, no, no. Could also just wait, but she might not. Yeah, I was going to say, she might actually just do that anyway. I'm going to attack. Oh, shoot. Well, what? Oh, yeah, right. Oh, no. Okay, I didn't realize I was going to lose the shield before she attacked. Oops. All right, took a damage. That's bad. Took one point of damage there. We got a stomp. Don't really want to do that. Freeze. Can we get a good angle on some of the freezes? Yeah, I think we can. Yeah, we're in a good spot for that, actually. Especially, I like how you can, aren't blocked by the people. You can go right through. All right. I, unfortunately, there we go. Right there. I can freeze all those guys. Or we can choose to freeze. No, I can't choose to freeze the other side. You can only freeze these three. Ah, I probably shouldn't have taken that damage. I could have done that without taking damage, probably, but I uh, chose to do that the wrong way. I read in an ancient text that poison magic takes five steps to damage the body. I'm sure you don't understand the meaning. <laughs> okay. Uh-huh. Okay, nice, nice tip, guy. Uh, we still have four gems here. 
so far doing fairly well. Uh, oh, wait a minute. That's the other half of the pendant. I guess that means we have to take it. Halberd only has a cooldown one when it destroys a chest. Yeah, that's too specific. I mean, especially when you're, if you're destroying a chest, it's the end, right? And it's like the least useful time that you need that. I mean, it just means you can uh, use the halberd to kill the last enemy. But the last enemies never seems to be a problem so far. So that one seems underpowered compared to the others here. Oh, freeze. You inflict enemies. Freezes for plus one delay. That's actually quite good, though. Ooh. Freeze is all enemies. I mean, because freeze, using our freeze ability, that's area of effect. That's really good. I freeze all the people in that area for an extra one. Whew. This is, but uh, the extra set bonus. Also, this is, though this is just max. Oh, actually, I can take both of these. The only problem is that I can't heal myself then. What we could do is take this and then heal myself. That would be a lot of hit points. Adds, uh, sheesh, that goes all the way up to 18 hit points. And the other one, though, if we can get this as well, that's pretty nice. Uh, we'll get up to 10 hit points, and I haven't been losing a lot, so I think we're going to take both of these. And next time, we'll end up probably resting. Freeze plus one delay. And back down to zero gems. And that's, again, assuming that it's not seven rounds. It's called seven sentinels, but... Uh, what is one, two, three, four, five? Uh, how many enemies do we have here on this map? We got seven sentinels. So it's all seven different enemies. They, my guess is perhaps once you've killed them all in a single round, which is this round, each round it was going up, was it? Or not? That that's the end. So this might be the end. Maybe not. Guess we'll find out. Um, okay. So this time I will not forget. I am down here in the bottom left, and we have a little friend here next to us who's gonna die soon. Um, last round also had all seven? Ah, okay. Sports are points out the last round. Oh, it did have all seven. Okay. I haven't been counting or paying attention to that. I was curious where the end might be, so I was guessing now. Oh, the, the last round did too as well, huh? Hmm. All right, then. Still don't know where the end game is. Sometimes that's good to know in uh, 70 year olds. Some, some devs will, I, I mean, a lot of 70 year olds will actually tell you how many floors there are or how many levels you have to go through, which I think is pretty helpful, uh, unless it's, there's some reason you want to keep that information uh, unknown. But, uh, oh, okay. Renton's giving us the info here. Oh, okay. All right. So here's the, here's, uh, there are 15 rounds total. So we're halfway through, almost getting close <laughs> to halfway through. Starting at six, they each start getting stronger with more HP and stronger skills. Okay. Um, I see. Yeah. Uh, I'm not noticing the HP increase yet, but, um, skill use and stuff. All right. That'll, that'll be good. That's good then. I'm glad. It's not, uh, it seems like uh, quite well balanced so far. Good balance and good progression. Um, I would be kind of disappointed if it was going to be ending soon. Um, but the fact that it, uh, the progression so far has been quite, quite uh, balanced, I think, in terms of challenge um, versus what you're capable of. And not obviously seems a little on the easier side, but if that's the first half of the game, then that's the right progression for sure. Uh, then I expect to have a little more difficulty here going forward and we will get to use we'll get to use that uh, rest in the end later okay so trying this out here um this guy next to us can hit him once and then he's gonna do something let's see what the other enemies do uh we'll might as well take advantage of the opportunity to hit this guy and then everybody else is just approaching seems like it's probably worth drawing him closer then Big freeze. Oh, it's that thingy. It's that orb thingy. Summoned orb thingy. That's gonna start doing stuff. Oh, it's, it like shoots, it tries to hit us with fire every turn or something. Basically, it's trying to make us move, I believe, was what it does. That's, uh, I think, I'm not sure if it actually hit me that time. I happened to be moving at the time. 
so it didn't be a problem. But uh, Renshin says, I forget the exact logic, oh, but you think two random, oh, two random enemies level up each round. Ah, okay, that makes sense, and that's that's a cool way to go about it, rather than being yeah too uh, too samey each time. Different enemies getting more powerful at different rates is cool. Okay, yeah, I can tell this person to our north here is getting stronger. Uh, I can see there's an extra hit point on that one. Hmm. I can see how Dash and the Halberd can combine pretty well as well. Hmm. I kind of want to move north. The guys to the east are going to take an extra turn anyway. Move north and start to try and engage that lady. I don't remember all their names. <laughs> remembering them by their... Since the names aren't shown anyway, I'm remembering them basically just by their uh, icon there. Rather than associating. The sharpshooter is, I guess, the easiest one, though, so... That's more obvious. Also, Girthquaker. <laughs> Girthquaker. <laughs> All right. Um, uh, unfortunately, I won't be able to use any abilities super effectively yet. If I move north, she's going to move, and then I don't have a way. I don't know how moving north actually really helps me yet. I guess I'll just see what they do. Yeah, okay. Well, they did exactly what I expected they do. <laughs> hmm... So it was an especially uh, helpful move. And I wonder what that thing... Is that thing to the east just gonna... Oh, wait, it had a timer on it. That's right. Hmm. I could halberd and move back, but that seems wasteful to halberd one person now that there's a larger number of enemies. Could... Another option would be to dash north and halberd east. And hit that lady. And then if she closes, you can hit her again. Then it'll probably be hit by the ship is my guess. I don't know his range. I don't really know much about how they work yet. And I'm assuming they, they literally just attack. They don't, uh, like, project that. I think. Actually, I might be able to tell by looking at this list here again. So here it is. Okay. Poison instant skill. Poison shot on a clear straight line of sight. So I don't know exactly how far that is. But um, range shot on all tiles from his to yours is the channel skill. Okay, so their instant skill, they can instantly poison us if they get line of sight. That seems not great. It's only one damage, though. It's all the same. It just means they get it at range. Hmm. Um, how far was Dash again? Hmm. I don't know if I really want to waste dash just yet, but what the other option is, I can only keep pulling back though. I can't get this. The thing is, it's easier with enemies that have to wait because it allows you to get the right amount of distance between them. This lady does not, so you have to force it. I like that though, that there's a really good mix. I mean, it should be, right? Oh, the other option is to shield and just attack because I have double shielding. That actually could work pretty well. I'm not sure how well it'll work with that thing, fiery orb off to the east, which is going to start doing stuff now, but. It's at least helpful. Maybe I should shield. I'm kind of just worried that something's going to do an ability that's going to stop me. from. If you try and chain together too many abilities in a row, um, then some enemy comes along and ruins your multi-turn plan, right? That's the problem. you got to have flexible plans in a case like that. And I guess that issue becomes more and more prevalent as you get further. And more enemies are using... There's just more enemies and there are more of them are using abilities. Because, hmm. yeah, I was just thinking right now of a three-turn plan, which actually could be kind of nice by going north and uh, and using the halberd as planned and then shielding up and hitting her directly. We could try that. I'm just mainly kind of worried about what's going to happen to the guy to the south, but we'll find out. Oh, I don't actually have to shield yet, though. Hmm. Okay, the person to the south is going to attack here. Wait, what? Oh. Wait a minute. They swapped places. But wait, isn't that one person fake then? Shoot. 
Okay, that's an ability we haven't come up against yet. <laughs> I was just about to kill that lady and she's got pushed to the southeast now. Uh, is this person in front of me then uh, that they're an illusion that doesn't matter and they'll die immediately? Hmm. But they can still attack, is my guess. Anyway, we're gonna get attacked by who was it? Is it Oh wait, is that the sharpshooter to the east? Is he gonna attack? Alright, I'm not quite sure what's gonna happen here, so I think I need to move. I just want to see what's going to happen. Whoa. Okay, there's the fire thing going. He's going. Oh, that's what's happening. It's the fire, dude. All right. And the person to the north should be fake, if that's the case. I have to move now, though. Or, wait, is it all per turn, right? Oh, wait, it's not this page. I'm looking at... Uh, I wanted to check real quick the bulwark there. All damage and side effects for one turn. Okay, I just wanted to make 100% sure it was... It's entirely turn-based, and so I have two turns for that, which means I can use that ability to test this out. So I'm going to shield myself and then attack the person to the northeast. Yeah, okay. They're fake and they just disappear. And we have one turn of shielding left. And we're still getting attacked by that thing to the southeast. That's fine. I'm going to use this opportunity to attack... And that thing is still going to keep attacking. I don't know how long they're going to do that for. <laughs> but now it's time to move. Okay, it's finally gone. Last for a few turns there. Alright, so we can stomp people back. That's not quite what I want. But I need, I'm waiting for other cooldowns is the problem. All right, the sharpshooter to the east, too. I don't know what his range is. It seems like it's not a problem yet. What happens if I move to the northwest? Yeah, I'm, I'm not curious about enemy AI behavior here. If the uh, lady there, will they both move northwest as well, or will they both move north? I guess it depends on, I wonder if it depends on who, which one moves first. Mm, not sure what the AI there. It might, because I don't want to get boxed into a corner. But I'm gonna try and learn it. Okay, yeah, that worked. Oh wait, did he have a did he have a point left on him? I might have missed that. Uh, I thought he he didn't. I think it was the guy behind him who did. So yeah, they've nicely lined up. It's too bad I don't have my halberd ready. <laughs> that would be kind of devastating. Uh, but I'm actually gonna take a hit here, unless I because uh, I don't have any abilities ready. I was going to heal up next turn anyway, but the, I think the problem is then it means I don't get the extra gem for not being hit, which I kind of like. The only other option here, I think I do have another option, is to back up one more turn and then freeze him, because my freeze is back. Oh yeah. Oh wow. Okay, we stepped out of range of that in time. So there was another option there for not getting hit. I need to make sure I got these triangles right. Uh, wait a minute. Wait, I'm, oh wait, what? Uh, I can't target on someone because it creates a ball. Shoot. <laughs> That's unfortunate. I was trying to, I wanted to freeze all of them, but I can't do that because I can't put it on top of someone. So the only option is to freeze. Oh, wait, I could do it way down here. Oh, this free, that has a nice range to it. <laughs> right. Nice. Um, okay, that should be good. Boom. Get frozen. Get frozen and die. Sharpshooter's coming over here again. So those frozen balls are just like staying there. <laughs> I'd like to move south, but if I do that, uh, I can't attack. Getting our abilities back though, so maybe I should. If I attack him, I might need to reposition. I might leave him for now. Okay, that's a lot of fools with abilities coming after us here. <laughs> Ooh, the chest appeared. 
Chest. Oh, shoot. I can't dash out of this. Oh, I'm not far. I can't dash anywhere. No, I thought I could dash out of this. Crap. Oh, I have a shield, though. Yes. We're shielded. Gonna be shielded. That's unfortunate, though. Hmm. I ended up moving. I moved back because I wasn't sure what they were gonna do. Now we know what they're gonna do, and it's not as good for us here. Okay, I'm gonna have to uh, shield myself. And then, I guess... Oh, wait, that guy in the north actually needs time for his, too. Hmm. Too bad it's on zero. Um, wait, no, there's one option here. I really want a halberd to the right. I got a halberd to the right. <laughs> yeah, there we go. That worked. Oh, it doesn't kill him. <laughs> oh, shoot. I could have killed that guy. Oh, well. Maybe I'll come up here and kill this guy. There we go. No! I was going to get out of this without getting hit. I didn't realize that that was going to happen. Otherwise, it would have. To I easily could have gotten past that. <laughs> All right, bastard. I'm not going to have enough chance to kill this guy. So close. Maybe I can still make it. I took the damage on the last turn. That was dumb. Um, can you shield to prevent poison damage? That's a good question. I was thinking about that a second ago. Um, oh, I, I didn't actually do it, though. I should, probably, I should have done that before the end, just in case. In fact, it, it's true. It would have shielded me. I would have protected that, and I would have gotten an extra gem. Should have slowed down there a bit and thought about that. Uh, I thought I, I, I crossed my mind for a moment, but I was more interested in calculating my ability to kill him before he could attack me. I thought that if I killed him, even on the last turn of the poison, I would get out of the poison. But that didn't happen. So I should have just shielded myself, because, yeah, shielding does say it protects you against status effects, so I'm guessing that includes poison. I mean, technically it's already on you, the poison, so. But, I mean, just by the strict definitions. Anyway, oh, it's you. I was just scavenging the battlefield for relics, or wounded warriors in need. <laughs> okay, man. Man, got to the very end and missed that bonus. It sucks. All right, a curse, a bracelet of Ouroboros. Uh, all cooldowns are minus two when breaking shard with another shard. Wait, what was shard? I even forgot what shard was. Uh, to be fair, I think you shouldn't have took damage since you hit him first. We'll call it a bug. Ah, uh, yeah, I, I, I mean, I can see it either way, but yeah, my assumption was that if I killed him, uh, then it wouldn't go to the next turn, which was when the poison should have happened. Um, so yeah, I, if you're gonna make more adjustments, that, that that'd be a fair adjustment. Um, Jade Serpent Scepter, all cooldowns minus one for each two enemies hit by however each two enemies. Oh, so I guess that would even count, even include shock affected enemies. If you already kill, I've killed three in one hit before, all cooldowns minus one. Hmm. Each and that's just for hitting them. Hmm, not even killing. I can see that being valuable. In the, I don't have a whole lot of cooldown reducing things, which I'm probably going to start needing more soon. Inflict shock on all enemies you dash through. That's pretty nice, too. I think we're going to go for this one. Just to get some faster cooldowns going. <sighs> Breaking shard. I forgot what shard is. <laughs> Oh shoot, I forgot to heal. I thought I, I, thought I was going to heal. I, I intended to have three gems there and I was going to have enough for both, but I don't. That's unfortunate. Oh, nice starting spot. <laughs> okay, can't freeze these guys. I'm assuming freeze would freeze me too. I mean, that's why I can't freeze these guys. But actually, their abilities don't affect themselves. So my abilities shouldn't affect myself, right? I mean, I'm basing that on that logic. I guess I could also read the description and it might actually tell us there. Instructions. 
uh, shard. Oh, shard. Oh, breaking shard with another shard. Oh, that's actually kind of cool. Now, shard is actually what the ice was ability was called. I forgot. I that was just in the back of my mind, but I didn't think about it at the time. That might have been. That was also a cool ability then. The other one that we left behind. Um, gain freeze. Oh, that was the other specific. That the shard is the 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 ice thing that's left behind. Oh, and you know what? That means I can't. Oh, wait, no, I can't use it on me, right? Because you can't put it on a position. But you can use... Yeah, yeah, I think it shouldn't affect me. It doesn't say that, though. Oh, right there, never mind. Enemies. Enemies within range, too. So, yeah, it doesn't affect... It won't affect us if I freeze this area. Which would allow me... Unfortunately, they're on, on either side of me, which is kind of annoying. I was going to say I can kill one, but I wouldn't be able to do that here. I have two turns. I'd be able to kill one of them, though, because we have the extension on ours. So I think I should probably do this. And maybe I should put... Uh, I guess where you put the shard also matters, <laughs> sort of. Do I want to put it behind me or in front of me? I'm going to put it in front of me and put out it out in the middle. Kind of a new obstacle creation thing. Um, Uh-oh. I just noticed the sharpshooter to our southeast. We're in line of sight of him, technically. Unless... Lily ponds block line of sight. I'm guessing they don't. There, there are obstacles to movement, but not line of sight. In which case, we could be shot, like next turn. That's a problem too. <laughs> hmm. What if I put the shard in the way? Uh, it won't freeze both of them then. I can't freeze both that way. That's unfortunate. Hmm. Well, I mean, I, I'm still going to be able to freeze them and move. That's not the problem. I could... I guess, I don't know. Would shield block the initial hit? I don't really want to use shield on that, though. And moving northwest actually doesn't help. I'd have to move southwest, which would put me closer to more enemies. Or northeast. It's in whichever direction I want to pick one of who I want to fight first. It seems like fighting the person to the southwest is a little more important. I don't like that person. <laughs> Northeast. One thing that I hadn't uh, mentioned yet that I had noticed was that it's nice when... I think it's pretty obvious when the music restarts. It'd be nice if we could get rid of the obvious restart and make it blend. Just an extra thing. Not Obviously not some the kind of quality or thing you might expect from a 7 DRL, but you can hear it restart. Uh, but it's good. I like the background music. I'm glad it's there. It's uh, good for atmosphere and it's nice. Well done, so... Just referring to the restart uh, looping aspect. I don't know if that's even possible or how easy that is to do in something like uh, this, or what kind of engine or the engine that you're basing this on. Um. Okay, so I am. God, this is a fun game. I'm, I'm enjoying this. The tactics of this game are really well done. Um, it kind of reminds me of a different kind of hoplite. I mean, Hoplite's a fun game, you know, but then you beat it a billion times and it's, uh, it's, uh, this is, this is, uh, kind of like that feeling, you know, it's just strategic, uh, nice use of very clear, distinct abilities and enemies with different abilities. In this case, obviously, the enemies have even greater range and more abilities and a little more complex. So it's kind of, I guess, in that sense, a little more, in that sense, a little bit more of a complex Hoplite. Hoplite's a good, uh, good one, though, too. Well, I'm going to continue this, but I've been streaming for another uh, almost two hours since the last break. So I'm going to take a break for just a minute and uh, be right back with some more water. Uh, let me see.
All right. <clears throat> Back <clears throat> to uh, kill some more sentinels. All right. Um, so um, the plan here. Um, mainly, I don't know. The, I think the sharpshooter has a range of at least five, and I'm probably in line of sight, so I can't can't stay here. It's mainly then a question of where I want to move to, and I probably do want to freeze these guys here. Either way. So we have basically two options. I either freeze the bottom or freeze the top. Freeze bottom and move... Um, I'd like to move northwest, uh, which would hopefully put me out of range of the sharpshooter. I'd prefer to go be going northwest because I want to take that lady out. Uh, but it looks like... I'm not quite sure. He, he probably still in range, or he could be. Um, so in that case, I'm going to go... Oh, wait. Oops. i to put the chat window back on top. Oh, Renton says, need to fix the music looping bug for the next version. I actually had the same bug last game I made too and forgot to fix it. Oh, shoot. <laughs> uh, yeah. Definitely, uh, yeah. One, a game like this that you might be playing for a while. Uh, and, you know, the music, it, it's it's repetitive in loops, but, I mean, it's not bad looping music, so it's, it's nice. But that makes it more noticeable. You want it to blend in, right? It's something that you don't... Uh, don't even realize it's there. It's just there for the atmosphere and theme, which is good. Uh, so yeah, I think I kind of have to move to the northeast and take out the Geomancer instead, just in case the Sharpshooter can actually hit. That's not really what I want to do, but we're going to do that. Boom, freeze. And then uh, we're going to head... I'm going to have to move northeast and attack this guy to the south. Everybody's coming. All right, well, no Geomancer to deal with now. And then I kind of want to get this lady to the southwest. Um, she's like a priority target, I think. <clears throat> I can already hit with the Halberd. The thing is, I don't. she might not even approach. Last time she, I expected to approach, she used her ability instead. I'm not actually sure when people are going to use their abilities. That's one of the bigger unknowns here. It makes it harder to decide specifically what you might want to do, tactically speaking. Hmm. And it's kind of unfortunate to use the halberd now if it's only against one enemy. Another option would be to shield in advance. But I don't see that, that the way enemies are going to start move crowding around, that would actually be disadvantageous in the long term. Another option then is to simply move and then see how the enemy acts and then react to that. Could move west one. Okay. That might be an opportunity to just shield and attack straight. Now I'm actually thinking of dashing to the southwest and uh, halberding right through both of them. Uh, the only thing I don't like about that is we'll start to be going into our lower cooldown or fewer cooldowns. Actually, one thing I need to check because I kind of forgot is uh, what relics we had. So we got an extra HP. We're getting a lot of HP stuff. Uh, the freeze is doubled. That's been helpful. Yeah. Cooldowns. Oh, for each. Oh, cooldowns. Yeah, that's where we go. For each two enemies. Hmm. So we'll get an extra, some extra cooldown from that. Oh, we're just uh, cooldown from Stomp. Okay. And an extra shield stack. I've been definitely relying on that. Okay. So we get more cooldown by hitting them. Just one, but it's something. It makes it almost worthwhile, or seemingly worthwhile, to come over here, dash here, and then halberd them. Boom! Cooldown minus. That's helpful. 
And then technically we're going to attack and kill some people here. Oh yeah. Oh, there went the ice ball too. That got taken out. Or the shard, so it's called. Um, okay, so yeah, see that leaves us with not any abilities, but there's a lot fewer enemies around. That's nice. As long as we have enough room to back up, we can take this guy out. But it's gonna be... Oh, also, we can freeze soon. We can already freeze now, too. Mm hmm. Oh, yeah. That guy. God damn it. <laughs> Wait, who did... Who use Which, which of these guys used that ability? So I am assuming this is going to disturb him. You're disturbed. And very frozen. Hey, Gozerian. Oh, didn't finish yours? Uh, there were a lot of, there was a yeah, higher failure rate this year. A lot of people didn't manage to finish. Um, well, higher than usual. Also, a uh, higher, a much higher rate of people who signed up and then just didn't actually submit. Um, kind of a first, I think, this year. So it's always gone up or been flat, which I talked about at the beginning. We went over the numbers in the first uh, part yesterday. Okay, so now we have mega, mega frozen these guys. Yes, and uh, also block that attack. I'm now just worried about the geomancer in the back. Uh, also, if I head east, I would like to kill the sharpshooter, honestly. He's only got two hit points, that so would make that easier. I can kill him, but if I do that, we're putting ourselves in more danger, and the other guy's getting closer. The guy to the east will have to kill him. We can go move. If we move east, he moves there, and then if I hit it, uh, then I hit the sharpshooter once, he moves closer, and then I can't kill. I don't have enough time to kill the sharpshooter before that. Oh, had a wedding to go to the final weekend, so that made it hard. Yeah. Yep, yeah, uh, real life gets in the way of a number of seven DRLs each year. <laughs> um, so yeah, one option here is to press forward, which I kind of like because I can take out or hurt the sharpshooters. That friggin' summit guy there. So I guess I'll have to do the the move instead, where I'm gonna I'm gonna I'd like to I guess I'd go southwest and hit the guy down there. The problem is then the sharpshooter is gonna come online right before I've killed that guy, I think, and then I can't be in view of the sharpshooter at that point. So no matter what happens, I'm gonna not be in a great position here. Won't be able to actually kill anyone, I don't think. Right, I can only halberd one of these dudes. There's a friggin' orb in the way. I can kill this guy to the east, though. It's probably worth trying to take him out. Hmm. <laughs> can dash away and leave him shocked to hit later. Just to hit hurt other people and leave people nearby, but I prefer to just stop them from using their abilities. Which means killing them immediately. Chop chop. Nice having sound effects too. Yeah, um, the cooldowns have been uh, really uh, nice. Not gonna get poisoned this time. Freaking sharpshooter took my bonus last time. Uh, I'm probably gonna need to reposition soon though. Uh, the sharpshooter AI is clearly different. Uh, it's kind of interesting uh, and good. 
I, I would really not want to see multiple sharpshooters in the same. I, I guess that's not. Uh, you don't. They never double up though. It's always different ones. I guess, which is they just level up, right? So that's okay. Because multiple sharpshooters would start to cause a pretty big problem with overlap. Um, I was just talking about hoplite a little earlier, and they know that's one of the bigger problems in hoplite. Once you get into the later, really later floors, where just almost every place you could even go is covered um, by someone um, uh, with long range. The uh, mages or whatever, or the and all and or archers and stuff. All right, so let's. I guess we're gonna do one damage here and then have to reposition, but choose somewhere that the sharpshooter will not quickly get an advantage. I could shield. It might be. A, I think it's worth shielding here. Basically, so that I can stay stationary and kill this guy. Mm -mm, here comes trouble. <laughs> the sharpshooter. Gonna need an ability to kill that guy. Which, hmm. I mean, I can I can nail this guy to the southeast for three damage before he gets to even move, which is nice. I'm gonna start doing that. Oh, the sharpshooter didn't come. Okay, he's, he's, he's interestingly, he didn't try to position in a, where he can hit us. He could have gone south and that would have been a bigger problem or at least forced our hand. He didn't do that though, which is, yeah, interesting. All right, I'm gonna knock this dude back. Ah, shoot. <laughs> okay, now he's actually using his ability. Uh, that's actually kind of a problem because if I move north, he could attack me the turn after I guess he won't though because he's gonna use his ability I don't want to get I don't want to have the chance of like stepping there and him also doing that but I guess he's telegraphing this which means it's okay I like the fact I like the mix of telegraphed attacks versus not in this anyway um so I, I can head south anyway um because this guy's not gonna move but all right time to go get our treasure I'm here to claim my treasure, and I'm here to do it without getting friggin' sniped. <laughs> Got my gem. Hmm. Yeah, I was mentioning that earlier on to sports are just uh, all. It's always nice when seven DRLs do this and, and instead of you know regular just stat type stuff. So very unique enemies, the nuke abilities. Same thing with the abilities you can acquire too. Things that allow you to do stuff that's very different. Okay, now this guy's gonna die. Dude, you don't stand a chance. I got all my abilities. I can literally just like dash right over in your face. Not get shot. <laughs> Funny running into you here. I got some new items in just for you. They've been in my cellar for years. Triple bonus. Oh man, these rounds are gonna take a while though. We're only in round eight. <laughs> All right, so all right, items can appear more than once. That makes sense. It's going to be inevitable considering the number of levels now then. It seems like you'll probably end up seeing all of them eventually. Baker's dozen millennium eggs gain shield plus one when you use dash through a shard. Huh, that's pretty cool. Interesting combos you can come up with here. Counterattacks with shock when you have shield. Ooh, I do like me some shield. And I'm still wondering what this one is. Is this each purchase or what? And I can't, I can't tell whether this is going to be beneficial enough for me. It sounds like a cool way to get max uh, HP. And I'm wondering if I should rest. I have 10 hit points. That's a lot. Am I going to start taking a lot of damage or something? I wonder if I should let myself get lower. It's one of those risk reward type things. It might be wasteful to just use. I was going to use a rest now, but I'm, I'm fairly if. Fairly consistently able to come out without even being hit. And if I get it once or twice, that's okay. But anyway, what do we want here? Uh, I, I do like this. I like getting, uh, especially when there's more enemies coming out. I think this will probably be pretty valuable. And yeah, I can't, I can't make a judgment on this one. Otherwise, it seems like this would be pretty good as a way to build over time. Uh, so I think uh, getting shield plus one, you've dashed through a shard. I do like using shards a lot, but I don't dash quite so much 
for that purpose. Shield plus one. I'm not going to bother with that. This sounds more generally useful overall. And then we can choose to either rest now or save it just in case. It always sucks if you die when you could have rested, though. <laughs> but seriously, I've only been hit by very low amounts. The only reason I have lower... You have what? I think you started the game with 12? Or was no, it was 10. You started the game with 10? I'm already back at what you start with. It's because of my items that I've got such a lot high max. So I should be at a decent level, I think, still. So I'm going to leave with one gem. I'm going to go with that. Hmm. I can, see, yeah, I can see how this could be really complicated if a lot of enemies have a lot of hit points. <laughs> um, fortunately, this lady's still weak. Hmm. Should I use the halberd immediately? in order to kill her in one hit. The other option actually would be to freeze both of them. That would also enable me to kill her. So it's a question of which one I want to use up. I think I'm going to go with the halberd. Ah. <clears throat> I thought you had to kill two enemies for it to do a minus one cooldown. Or did it mean max two? Um, relics here. The scepter, was it? All cooldowns minus one for each two enemies hit by Halberd. Why did it give... It showed me a cooldown minus thing, but I only hit one enemy. Is that a, is that a bug, or am I misinterpreting something there? I thought I had to hit two and then get one cooldown, but it, uh, yeah, that was only one enemy. And it showed the little cooldown pop-up effect. Supposed to be sure not what happened. No, not sure what happened there, said Renton. Oh, okay. Yeah, uh, let me think. Oh, I just hit them in the attack, 9, 10, 1. It seems like it did affect the halberd itself as well afterward, or no? Hmm. <clears throat> okay, so, continuing here. All right, other lady to the south needs to die. The main people I'm more afraid of are the people who don't rest at all and ha and are more likely to use like dis disruptive magics, like the uh, the two ladies tend to like to get rid of them first. Might be a bug caused by the... Se oh, Sportser has a guess here. That's a good one. Sounds like a, good one. a bug caused by the second square being off the map. Huh. Yeah, that sounds like a possibility from a programming perspective. But, uh, let's see. Okay. Um, so I saved with the freeze. This guy to the south, he doesn't actually... Re he does rest one, doesn't he? So I, sh I can move southeast and he'll move over... And then have to rest. I won't actually quite be able to get away from them though. I'm gonna attack though. There we go. Get to attack you once. Hmm. Renton says thinking could be it. Uh, thanks for the next version. Uh, <clears throat> are you planning on doing a whole lot more work on the game? I and mean, it's pretty uh, well rounded and, and done already. It seems like it's pretty close to what you would call a very complete state. I guess maybe a little bit of rebalancing here and there. But like I said, uh, so far I think it feels pretty balanced. Mainly just little bugs so far. Small stuff. Very well done for a 7 DRL. Also, when, when do we get to play it on mobile? <laughs> we needed a roguelike on mobile other than Hoplite. <laughs> Meaning like, you know, more pocket-sized, uh, more suitable for phone type style as opposed to, you know, other traditional style roguelikes. which are just not really suitable for that platform. All right, let's see. Hmm. Hmm. Pagel says, for real, this like a perfect phone game. Yeah, it does look like it could work really well on the phone. Oh, uh, so Renton says plans are fix bugs, add some new skills, but yeah, we're pretty happy with balance considering 70 I would love to do mobile, but have to learn how to do it with Pi Game. Ah. Yeah, well, yeah, it would be really great if you could, and sure, this could, a lot of people would really like this. I mean, it's like, it's hoplite level uh, material here. If you can get it, you know, also working nicely on the phone in terms of uh, uh, just usability and everything all together. It's, it's got the right form factor and the right size, more or less. So, yeah, more more relics. Mm -hmm. Even more relics. You see, there's quite a good number already. But yeah, I can see. And, and they all seem, a lot of them seem pretty balanced, uh, which is nice. 
Uh, like I said, there were still a few that might be good. I can't tell whether they're good or not based on descriptions alone. But, you know, with more play and just experimentation. Right now I'm doing less experimentation because I'm only going to do one run, <laughs> uh, the length, given the length. Um, otherwise, I'd be experimenting more if it was short runs and maybe do a quick short run, try a bunch of different items stuff. But this is more slow progression in terms of uh, items. So, Okay, back to concentrating on this uh, battlefield at hand. Um... All right, and you take this guy next to me. He's not moving. We can move north one more, and he'll chase us again. I don't, I mean, we're going to start getting boxed into a corner, but we still have dash, which is helpful. Dash and shield and everything else is ready. Freeze. Uh, but if I back up one more, we might not be in a good opportunity to just kill this guy. Unless someone does something like cast a spell. Wow, that's an early chest. That's a lot earlier than usual. Is it because we're... In, it's not because we're nearby. Is that just random? I haven't seen such an early chest before. Or do, can it, I wonder if it also can chests disappear after a while. I've never I really had one around that long, so I don't know if they can even disappear. And so by appearing earlier, you have to kill it before it disappears, destroy it. Or is it just there until the end? I feel like it should disappear, balance-wise. Just because you'd always, almost always want to leave a chest till the end. In that case, when there's almost no enemies around, then you can get it pretty much for free. Seems like it should be time-based. All right, so now I can kill this guy, hopefully. Unless someone else ruins my plans. Okay, no plans were ruined. Uh, um, she's gonna cast, She normally she casts the replace thing. That was the other ability, and I, I need to remember abilities. But it's Sentinels, she's the Gemini person here. Instant skill is to spawn a clone, to spot places with a weak one. Uh, spawn as many shadow clones of themselves. That's what they're channeling, okay. Yeah, they're going to... I haven't actually seen that yet, have we? It says many clones. Does it only spawn... I thought it, there was only one earlier, though. Hmm, maybe it, maybe that means they can spawn more than one over time or something, but anyway. Well, we don't hunt that, that's, that's for sure. <laughs> Channeling ability. I kind of want to get that chest in case it disappears on me. But also need to stop this lady. Stop. Hmm. Oh, Mr. Geomancer is coming over here now too. Not the guy who I wanted to kill. Damn it, I'm supposed to kill this guy next turn. <laughs> Ruining my plans. I was gonna kill that guy, but wait a minute, wait a minute. No, I'm at zero, so yeah. Uh, the shield on zero means that it will disappear before the enemies attack, which means uh, I will get damaged, and I don't can't have that. I was so close to killing that guy too. All right, we'll be okay from the sharpshooter from here. All right, so if I disrupt him... All right, he goes back to one. He should. He's not going to attack me, right? Okay. Making sure. Okay, I can't. I can move southwest and be okay from the sharpshooter. Unless he moves south, then I'm gonna have to keep retreating. Ooh, I really want to hit that guy to the northeast with my halberd. Oh wait, I can. Ooh, watch this. Because I forget, it doesn't take time. <laughs> Need to remember that. Cooldown minus minus. Uh huh. <laughs> All right. So, well, hmm. I really want to know if the chest is going to disappear. Because if it is, if I know the chest is going to disappear, I will head northeast right now and take it out. Um, there's enough time for that. 
This should be okay. Otherwise, I kind of want to go southwest and pull myself out of the corner, which is kind of dangerous. I'm going to go southwest and just leave it, and we'll find out. All right, that guy did move. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> the, the, the sharpshooter moved south. I was afraid of that. <coughs> Freaking sharpshooter. I like it. They hang back and get annoying, be annoying. I can charge him, but that makes it more dangerous because there's other enemies following, so I have to make sure I can take him out really quick. It'll be even harder when the sharpshooters get even more health. Well, I was hoping I could use this opportunity to attack this guy, but apparently that's not happening. So I guess I'll continue retreating. Yep, <clears throat> to be expected. Oh shoot, I actually don't have any other abilities to use right now. Eh. <laughs> well, that's a bit of a problem. I'll have one online next turn, but damn, I can't attack this guy. That sucks. Okay. My least used ability, bashing people back. Uh, freeze, um, it's probably something I want to do here. I can't get, I can't, I can freeze both the guys to the north, it looks like. That's probably what I need to do here. Unfortunately, because of these guys to the south, I will not be able to take advantage of this opportunity to get this guy to the northwest. Because I gotta kill his friends. Gonna have to keep retreating. Chest is still there. Oh, hello there, friendo. He's shocked. So I shouldn't be poisonable if I put on my shield now, I believe. And this seems like a good opportunity to shield myself and then attack this guy. And hurt both him and kill the guy next to him. Got ya. No, you didn't. Ha ha ha. Okay, so yeah, shield did protect from that. If I move over here, I can almost, I can kill this guy, kill the sharpshooter in three turns without him attacking. The main problem, I guess, is the guy to the, oh, the guy to the north is coming over here. In which case, it almost means I have to retreat instead. I'm gonna, otherwise, end up in the corner. I don't have a whole lot of other, freeze will take five turns to come back online. Shard, as it may be called. Hmm. Currently an opportunity to move north and then head over. Oh, the chest, is it? I think the chest is going to disappear now. It's like glowing. I don't think it was doing that earlier. So yeah, it does have a timer on it. Hmm, makes me want to go for the chest. Unfortunately, if I go north with this, I can't head east. I can't go northeast. Oh, wait, I can go northeast one turn. Yeah. Crap. Gonna get hit now. Wait, what was that? That guy hits everything around me, was it? Shoot. I forgot exactly what his one. The other guys was doing that. Does it guy does the same thing? I'm not fam super familiar with all of them yet, still. 
Oh, the necromage is what he is. Oh, the summons soldiers. Oh, spirits around your tile. Channels. Oh, his channel skills. Spirits around your tile inflict haunt. All right, what was haunt? I haven't actually seen that before. New ability. Uh, instructions and controls. Haunt. Uh, haunt. Increase cooldown of skills already on cooldown. So that means cooldown basically starts going up while you're in those cells, is my guess. And that's what he's about to do. So all these areas. I could spend three turns, two moving to the chest and then one opening it. Or use the halberd right now and open it without even moving. Oh, I can't actually halberd to the northeast, so that's not a decision I can I can do. I'm just going to let this haunt happen and see what happens. Cooldown minus one. Oh. Um, I see. So it's just a one-time thing. It doesn't actually, like, continue or whatever. All right. Got us a gem. All right. No, I just got to take care of the remainder of these guys. This other dude over here is, um... Only got one health left. He's also slow. Just gotta watch out for the sharpshooter. Man, we get rid of, rid of that sharpshooter. He's got three health, though. It's hard to do quickly. Almost had an opportunity earlier. Hmm, so the two guys in the front, they're at least kind of slow, but if, if I leave them around too long, they start to use their abilities, which gets more problematic. Wait, if I move forward, his line of sight is not clear. Oh, I can move forward and kill this guy here, but then uh, we'll have to... Hmm... What happened? I'm going to try to engage these guys. If I move forward, I won't get attacked, right? Yeah. There we go. That's actually not bad. This is an okay spot to be in. I can kill this guy with a regular hit after freezing his buddy. Can freeze all these guys. Stop right there. Shouldn't that guy have had a dot after he moves? I mean, he didn't have a weight dot, but he also didn't do anything. Hmm. Anyway, all right, last guy down. Uh, last guy is uh, getting ready to go down here. Uh, hmm. <laughs> well, I can do this. I can't actually kill him though, because he's got too much health. These guys have too much health now. Like now I can attack him, but Shock only hurts adjacent guys, so I can't do that. I have to retreat. Hmm. I guess I could just wait for him here. Then freeze him and kill him. All right. Quickly, you fool. Come buy something from me before they come back. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I ended up getting hit once there, huh? Damn. Lost my extra gem bonus. Poison plus one. Wait, what? Thimble of Wolves. Poison plus one of exactly one adjacent enemy after Bulwark. Oh, you mean it poisons the enemies? That's interesting. Uh, Renton here says, I've noticed a bug where sometimes Necromage delay doesn't appear. Still need to solve. Oh, okay, so yeah, that must have happened there. I'm, I'm pretty sure. I mean, he's supposed to have that one delay. That's how I was used to it. And I think I saw it appear for, I think I saw it appear, appear for a split second. And then it disappeared. But he did nothing. So clearly it was still in effect, but it didn't display anymore. Um, also, his haunt also makes you lose one hit point. Oh, which you should have made. Oh. 
Oh, really? It also makes you lose one hit point, which I should have made clear, but the tile you're on is safe from it. Oh, I was wondering, it looked like the tile I was on didn't have a marker on it, but I wasn't sure. I thought that might have been because I was standing on it. And so I wasn't sure about that. Um, if I'd known that, that, in fact, I guess that's what would hit me then, huh? I didn't get hit by anything else. Otherwise, I wouldn't have moved if I'd known that. I only moved because, yeah, I assumed that I was going to get hit anyway. That, uh, hmm, yeah, I, I, that should be clear, I guess, then. Um, I mean, I, you know, in hindsight, like I mentioned, I didn't notice that I wasn't highlighted there in the center, but I wasn't sure if it was because I, I was there or not. It was because I was there. Anyway, so apparently you can poison enemies when you put up a shield. That's pretty cool. That's that's pretty cool, but it but you know it takes time and it's one damage after time and I'm not normally leaving anybody alive Usually not but it's I think you know what I think that's gonna get more and more likely as there's more enemies and they have more hit points Increase shard launch range. Oh Harmonic incense burner by one tile <laughs> Halberd only has cool that one would have oh, yeah, I've seen that before the chest. I, I like both of these This one's actually pretty cool for long-term combat and I do like my shield, especially since it's a buff shield. This is also kind of nice. Maybe I don't need this one quite as much, but the shard is pre is really valuable. And I guess being able to put it even further away is somewhat helpful. But the main reason I use shard is as a way to attack people. And so I don't want to do it far away. I want to do it when they're close. Um, so maybe that's not as useful as poisoning someone who eventually, who somehow gets away or will have to retreat from but I shielded myself against, so I think I'm gonna use that. And I'm still not gonna heal myself. Damn, but I'm gonna get a plus one when we go back. Yes, plus one again. All right, here we are in the middle, surrounded. First thing we have to notice is where is the sharpshooter? Okay, hmm. I can see how shock starts to become super important later. Getting enemies bunched together and, and shocking them is just a massive damage multiplier. Especially, yeah, once you have multiple shocked enemies, that can obliterate them. Hmm. Could use a lot of abilities right away here just to take some people out. Or mess them up real bad. I kind of want to immediately dash, actually. Immediately dash north. Freeze these fools. Immediately dash north. Halberd two of them. And then kill the guy next to me. Can do all that right away. And then... But then we'll be left with only two abilities. The the stomp is really the, the least useful. I guess I haven't buffed it at all. But overall, not as useful to me, tactically. So I'd be left with just a shield after that shield and regular movement which is not too bad especially yeah I, that might work it seems kind of dangerous i like to leave dash for when i really have to get away from something especially enemies who are using abilities because their area of effect abilities dash is like your only way well i guess you can do shield too but you got only uh for movement wise dash is the only way to get away from that kind of thing so using it to do just a two tile hop is kind of kind of awkward the main purpose being just in order to do the extra damage. Let me think of a less aggressive tactic possible here. Less aggressive would be freeze the people to the northwest. Freeze all three of them. And then... Attack one and then the lady comes from the east. And then attack and halberd her, if she comes. That could work too. It would kill one person, do a little less damage overall. But mm, it's hard. And save dash. The main reason for that would be to saving, save the dash and not use that up, I guess. Let's try that. Uh, so I could put actually I put it right here to block the other guy's movement. If that becomes an issue. It also blocks my movement though. If I put it here, it leaves it a little more open. Mm. I think I'll block movement. And then from here we can attack. Wait a minute. I did not realize. You know what I just realized? Shoot, I just wasted that. I might be in sharpshooter. The sharpshooter can hit me. Crap. 
been looking at, been staring at my screen too long. <laughs> Uh, he's he's actually lined up with us, so this was a bad move. Uh, I could have done a much better move. No, wait. Actually, I can do the same move I planned, just in a different order. Because I'm just using the abilities anyway. I'm going to have to use the dash. I, I didn't realize that the sharpshooter's already aimed at us, and he's going to hit us, so I don't want to do that. Uh, I could shield myself, but I don't want to waste the shield just yet. So we're going to instead do the first plan. Hello there, dude. All right, I'm gonna poison these dudes. <clears throat> I hope. <laughs> oh, actually, this could be a problem. <laughs> I'm gonna get. I'm gonna get blocked in. I should probably start retreating. <laughs> uh, the sharpshooter being on the left side is actually a bit. Oh no, wait. He's probably blocked by the trees. That counts as blocking line of sight. So I should be able to retreat to the west. Unfortunately, I can't attack. But retreating west is helpful. Oh man, I really want to whack these guys. I don't know how long they stay shocked for. I think I've seen, noticed before that it lasts a little while, but it's not forever. Some kind of countdown on that. Pretty sure. But it lasts a, a bit of time. Otherwise, yeah, what I'd like to do is hit them because they take extra damage. But I need to get away from these guys. There's the treasure chest, and uh, yeah, we know that it's gonna disappear early or whatever. So the sharpshooter should not be able to hit me because of the trees. But unfortunately, I think I'm about to get hit because I'm still one cooldown away from everything. I was hoping to get over here in time for my, uh, in time to be away from the cooldown. I, maybe if I'd moved southwest a second for one turn earlier, I could have gotten behind this area. Ah, uh, shoot, I'm gonna get it. Okay. Damn, it was one turn away. So close. Gonna freeze these guys. Ah, shoot, friggin' sharpshooter. <laughs> Wasting, he's ruining my plans. I was gonna be able to kill this person. Sharpshooter can... How does he do that? <laughs> Wait a minute, how, how can he can use that ability? He's going right through the tree. He's allowed to use his ability through the tree? You don't have line of sight. <laughs> Cheater. <laughs> uh, I guess, depending on how the game calculates it, the line of sight could go north one more space no it's still technically it's hard to say i guess it's on the line in between the two anyway i assumed he wouldn't have been able to get around to do that oh that is unfortunate um i could still do it by wasting dash again once again do you waste dash or not <laughs> in order to uh make the kill i've got but the, all right so it's gonna take one I'm gonna, the main thing is i'm gonna make sure need to have other skills online first but, all right, the other other options here are to move away. They okay, might move northeast. I can't, I'll still take one damage. After I attack. Unless I want to use the Halberd Destroy. I hadn't actually used that yet. I could use Halberd. Then I don't take the damage. But I've already taken damage, so honestly, taking damage is not, uh, it's no longer a top priority. But I'm going to use it just because using abilities earlier is better. So, getting rid of people is good. Alright. Much better shape now. Alright, my plan in coming over here is to run away. Dead. 
Dashing over here to get the chest. Chest important. Okay, a lady made a little star thing, and this other dude, did he heal somebody? Uh, I could switch over to shield now, or push them back. Pushing them back is decent, actually, because I'd still be able to attack. And I'm going to have to move in a moment, I think. Well, no, I'll be I can block damage from that other thing, but... If I push them back, then I'm starting to go on the offense. Don't normally get to use it anyway. Wait, what? Oh, you can't push two guys back? Okay, well, that answers that. <laughs> oh, you can see he's got that little poison counter on him now. No abilities. Ice is coming on soonest. We have one more turn of being safe for now. Okay. He is going to be poisoned to death, even if I don't attack him. And we've got this down dude on the bottom, bottom, bottom side is uh, targeting us, but I'm going to move out of their way anyway. He's just going to do that for several turns. This is what he does. Forcing you to move several times. Trying to get me in the range of that sharpshooter, aren't you? <laughs> oh, I thought both of them might come up here, but that did not happen. All right, his friend is now going to come up here. You got to, right? Hmm. I was mainly waiting for a chance to use the halberd on him. He's kind of coming up here. Okay, good. He's coming up here. Good. Hello there. Wait, how many health do you have? You have three pivot, three pips of health. Hmm, I kind of want that lady to come over here so I can damage her along with this guy because he's shocked. Uh, I guess the, the shock... Oh, did, I forget. Does the shock go away when you hit them? Uh, I don't recall, actually. Uh, yes, it does. Okay, confirming that. That is confirmed. And now he's going to die. I'm hiding behind these uh, plum blossoms from the lady who is now casting something instead of coming at me. I'm trying to wait for her to come at me, but she's not doing it. All right, I'll let you cast. I'm just gonna wait here. Now you come. All right, time to finish this guy off. We have a dash, freeze. Be in pretty good shape to take this guy out. Even if he uses an ability. He might do at any moment. He's got four health, though. Sheesh. Hey, Pagels. Yeah, I'm getting late, I know. I'm late for me. I'm past my normal stream time, but I went through several other shorter 7DRLs and then started this one thinking there might be enough time left to finish it, but it's a long puzzle one, so yeah. Anybody who's out, uh, I, I want to finish, but uh, it's, a, it's a game where you can, if you take it your time, you can think through almost all of these problems, which is, I think, it's, it's good, but it's also it's more time-consuming. Uh, I'm sure some people can do it faster too than me. It's like people who play, um, what is it, that game? Um, uh, 
and dice, slice, slice and dice, slice and dice. That's the game, slice and dice. And it's another pretty cool uh, game, which is also um, a nice mobile version and uh, not really uh, a true roguelike, but you know, a lot of roguelike players uh, enjoy that as well. Um, dice rolling game. And it's amazing. I play that game so slowly. I can play it on, I can, I win it on normal in like a, maybe a three hour run. There's people who do that and, and it's pretty hard to win on normal. It's pretty complicated, at least for me. And um, there's people who win on the insanely hard modes in like an hour or less. Yeah, <laughs> 6 a.m. after all for you. Oh God. Oh yeah, taking, taking my time here. But uh, that that's just crazy. Um, that some people can do that just think through all those possibilities so fast and picking who you're going to attack and all the different uh, items and abilities you want to pick whether or not you want to roll oh the probability tree in that game is just crazy and people can i mean the fact that you can even win those modes to me is kind of insane because no matter how much i think about it even on hard hard is really hard for me on that game which is unusual generally play pretty well uh, at most roguelikes and uh, again i don't think those games it's more of a different kind of a puzzle game but it's, it's a very good game, though. The game is amazing. I was hoping there's going to be a swarm coming. Oh, you mean this one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. For uh, this game, is uh, I like this. Uh, this is a cool game. Uh, and yeah, I do hope there'd be a phone version. I would definitely buy that if you're going to sell it. <clears throat> um, very good. I'm sure a lot of people would. There's a, a lot of... I think there's a lot of people who want games like Hoplite and strategic games like this. Uh, with this kind of quality and balance and just, uh, yeah, overall gameplay, it's, uh, there's a, there's a lot of, but you know, it's, it's, I know it's, it's hard to make a, and release an, a mobile game. Uh, well, I mean, if you're going to do it for money, it's, and actually try to make money off it, that's really hard. But, uh, uh it's, there's a lot of demand there for anyone who wants to do it, even as a hobby, which then at least it's not quite as demanding. <laughs> okay. So back to taking this nerd out let's say uh, what are you doing sharpshooter um you gonna come at me uh i don't i have a shield so i guess i should just wait for him he's not gonna do anything okay no he's gonna pull back uh i could just never mind i could just go over and kill him because i can dash and shield and kill just watch me screw something up here The last relic you bought was sitting on my shelf for 20 years. I'm happy to know it has finally found a home. <laughs> I like his little extra comments. Damn, I wish I hadn't taken that one damage again. Anyway, got three gems instead of four this time. Again, frosted lotus earrings. Increased shard blast radius by one tile. Wow, that seems pretty amazing. All cooldowns, minus one for each four enemies hit by stomp. Hmm. Interesting. I would really hope I don't have that many enemies I'm stomping. I'm usually stomping one <laughs> or two. If that. I don't really use that much. Uh, here's another one. Oh yeah, we saw that one. Uh, Baker's Dozen Millennial Legs. Okay, so I like Shard Blast Radius. That one's the clear winner here for me. And I'm still just going to leave the shop and get my one HP for free back. There we go. <clears throat> Round 11. And these some of these guys have a lot of hit points now. You get multiple, multiple goes at a few of them because you can't take them all out in, in one hit like before. Even the Geomancer's got an extra hit point this time. <laughs> and the Sharpshooter this time is starting really close. Man, I want to kill that guy. He's really annoying. <laughs> He's like long-term annoying. All right, what's our freeze range now? Look at, look, at, look, at, look at this. Oh, man. Oh, God, I can freeze every single one of them except for that dude down there. Hell, yeah. I should do that just because I can. <laughs> I can freeze them all except for the dude who's already frozen. <laughs> I'm just going to do that because there's like no question that's awesome. All right. So the sharpshooter to the northeast has four freaking hit points. Uh, I really want to kill him because it's a good opportunity, but it'll require an extra move and I can get a kill, hurt these guys to the south for free. So I really should probably take them out. I don't need, I actually won't be able to kill them, but. Well, no, I will be able to kill one. Oh, no, he's shocked now. Oh, yes. Oh, you're so dead. That's right. Shocked. Shocked to death. Hmm. Now there's the problem of taking out the sharpshooter. He's the one who's... 
The sharpsuit is hard to take out, though. He's the one who's furthest out, so he should be the target. But he's also the hardest to kill. And if I try to kill him, if he gets weak, I bet the other lady will swap. Um, I kind of want to go for her then instead, but that's going to box us in with enemies and a sharpshooter pointing down in the other direction, which is kind of dangerous. Also, I'll only be able to get so close. Who knows what abilities they're going to use here. Sharpshooter. Can The question is mainly, can I take out the sharpshooter first? I can move northeast one and then shield and maybe poison him, I guess. And drop our abilities a lot, but then I don't have to dash at least. So let's do that. Move northeast. I'm going to shield immediately. Poison this guy so that even if he gets away, he will be in pain. And actually, I can just kill him. Oh, no, I'm not going to be able to kill him. But I will be able to bring him down more. Shoot, he's not dead yet, though. So close. Uh, I don't know what his poison counter is in terms of time. He's got one. Uh, I have zero shield, which means I can't attack without getting hit. If we're going to try, I will try and continue to try to not get hit, which means I'm going to have to pull back from this guy and hope there's another chance later. Oh, he lost the po he lost from poison immediately. Okay. I thought it was five turns. It hadn't been five turns yet. Or is that only for you? I thought it was... Uh, maybe I should check, actually. Might as well check. Relics. Uh, which of my relics is doing that here? Rule no, rule no, stop. Anyway, um, oh, wait, oh, oh, here we go. Poison plus one of exactly one adjacent enemy. Okay, it doesn't actually tell us, but that wasn't five turns, which means, makes me believe that enemy poison is faster. Anyway, he's dead now. <laughs> I could have actually saved him because he was shocked. That would have been more useful. But no, I had to kill him. Never mind. I can't save him. I could have pushed him back and then he would have come at me again. But he might not. He might use an ability. That would be even worse. So <laughs> that's probably a good thing. So I can't actually... It would be funny if I if I use a stomp right now and push... I, it won't push that lady back because there's a stuff behind her. Or would it push her into that like ice ball thing and freeze her? That'd be pretty awesome, actually. Hmm. Anyway... We're gonna have to pull back and cool down a bit. Time to cool down. And then people are gonna start using some abilities soon enough. Anyway, we draw this lady away from her friends. It's working. All right, got some abilities back. The problem with that is then I can't freeze them all together. Freezing them together would be kind of nice. Could just halberd her right away. It's nice that I have to worry about the sharpshooter for once. Hmm, there's the chest. Shoot, why do you have to do it so perfectly, man? <laughs> uh, he's perfect. I, oh, wait, he don't hit. I bet his range probably increased as part of his abilities, didn't it? That's just a guess. Um, he didn't quite have this much range. I'm pretty sure I could jump out of it earlier. Oh, it's that guy. Never mind. I forgot. I wasn't noticing. That's the necromancer. No, wait. That's not the necromancer, though. That the guy who's casting is that one. Shoot. I'm getting confused here. This is the... This... Oh, wait. Was it? Necromage. This is the dude who summons. Yeah, he's the one who's coming from the east. The other one is this guy. Here we go. Heals friends large... A poison blast. Okay, that's the poison blast guy. Anyway, I was going to shield anyway because this lady's right here. And, oh, wait. We don't have a shield. Shoot. <laughs> Oh, God. Okay, I'm gonna have to do another option here. Well, I have big ice. I have big. You have big poison. I've got big ice. <laughs> you are too close. Get out of here. Now I should have enough opportunity to kill this lady. Uh, unfortunately. Don't have enough time to get right next to this just yet. Hell yeah. Got my gem. One gem. The other gem is still coming. 
All right, um, stump, shield, we've currently got that. Gonna wait for, let, let this guy get close and see if I can hit him. Well, okay, that didn't work. <laughs> Did not work. And this guy is also back. This guy does, uh, oh, that's, wait a minute. It's the same dude again. All right, he's, he's disappointed he didn't get to do it last time. <laughs> Like, let me show you what I can really do. All right, time for a shield then. Finally. Yes. Shield and attack. Hmm, just a question of which guy I want to kill or be more focused on. Hmm, kind of a hard decision, actually. I don't really like the Necromancer dude. He Those extra guys he summons really make positioning annoying. I like how they're only one hit, though. One, oh, one hit to kill. I guess I'll try to work on him. Wait a minute, how come that other guy's ability isn't triggering yet? <laughs> oh, wait, there's another dude's ability it's triggering too. It's overlapping now. All right, I guess I'm going to switch targets. Boom, here I hit two. Now who is it? What the? <laughs> what? Why is he still going? Why you make this so complicated, dude? My shield's going to be gone. And I can't freeze all of you. What? All right, wait a minute. I can... I can stomp them back, I guess, and then freeze the other guys. Friggin' annoying. Oh, wait, I don't necessarily want to stomp now. This guy can't move immediately. He will die next turn. All right, freeze goes down to these guys. Stop you again. Hmm. All right. Uh, so yeah, the, the remainder of this shouldn't be too hard. Mainly just a case of baiting this dude and uh, he's just healing himself up down there. Or healing somebody up. Okay, this was that other guy's ability where I don't move and it's good. The oh wait, or is this his summon ability? Oh, his, his channel is summon. Ah, uh, shoot. I don't want him to summon. <laughs> Especially if he summons me in a corner like this. That's actually kind of bad if I don't have other things. This is dangerous. So you know what? I'm actually going to dash right up to him and whack him in the face. But I might dash here instead, so that we're kind of moved off at an angle. No! You again! <laughs> God. Alright. Hey, yeah. Wait a minute. What does that guy do? Shoot. I can't... <laughs> Some of these guys are similar. The Necromancer is the summon. This was the guy who did the, um... God damn it. Ah. Uh, been playing too long now. Whoops. This is... Oh, shoot! <gasps> I pressed down while I thought it was in a menu. God damn it. <laughs> I thought I was in a menu. That shouldn't have happened. Crap. No, man. Anyway, like I was saying, I'm getting kind of tired here. Mm-hmm. Down east. Oh, it's you. I was just scavenging the battlefield for relics. Or Wounded Warriors. So anyway, I was playing that one faster. Oh, I already got hit anyway. Uh, I thought I was in a menu. I accidentally pressed backspace before I hit down. I am intended to hit down to look up the uh, ability again, but I hit backspace, then down, and it moved me because the uh, arrow keys move as well. I'm not used to that. I was using arrow keys for the menu and numpad for movement on the game. Anyway, okay. 
sheesh, only around 11, so I got more of these. Uh, this is a situation where I wish I could save the game. <laughs> yeah, I've already gone over. Um, shoot. Uh, I guess... I guess I have to leave it running and finish it later. Uh, I can't... It's gonna, though, At the rate it's going, it's going to take a little while longer to win. Probably win anyway. But it's going to take a little while and it's already getting late in the day. I won't be able to play. It's gone an hour past normal stream end. And it's 15 levels and I, instead of or less than that. So <laughs> it's good to know the end though. That's very helpful. Um, so I think I'm going to have to call it quits here. Uh, but... I, Hopefully, I can leave the game running and finish and, and win it later. Uh, I don't, I probably, I won't do that on stream though. Instead, what I would do, if that would be interesting, is maybe uh, for next time uh, on my way, I'll maybe take some screenshots or whatever and can share that uh, at the next stream, uh, which uh, my next stream for 7 DRLs will be uh, next week. Uh, I got stuff to do the rest of the week in the morning, so I unfortunately I can't stream. Otherwise, I'd like to continue streaming uh, tomorrow and finish that up, because I'm only going to be doing three 70 year streams this year. This is the second, so there's one more with uh, several more. I'm going to, yeah, several more games on the list. A couple more, yeah, several more. I went through more today than I thought I would, actually, so I might even pull another one in. But there's, um, I have to get the other one working that didn't work. But, yeah, hope, uh, hope that feedback was helpful, Renton. Uh, seems like it was. Um, yeah, it, it's a great game. Excellent job on this one. I'm very glad to have played this, and uh, good luck with the continued development. I look forward to beating it and playing it some more. I'm gonna, what I hope to do is, yeah, just exit out like I had with the other game, even just let it play. As long as that doesn't mess up, isn't it only that it's not messed up in the browser, you know, to, to let that happen, to leave it running and or even uh, put my put my laptop to sleep, which I did with the other some of the other seven DRLs I've left. I just put it to sleep and turned it back on later. It's all fine. It could still still finish the runs that I was doing. Um, so yeah, that will be it. But first, I'm gonna before we do that, I guess I'm gonna pick this. That was kind of dumb that I ran into that. I, I probably should heal up at the finally. But anyway, very happy you found the bonus baby, Yoko City. Oh, <laughs> you found the bonus baby in my last game too on stream. Yeah. Oh, that's right. I oh, no wonder your name was so familiar. Sorry, I forgot you did the um, Yoko City Fire Rush. I knew the name was familiar, and you'd done. Uh, I guess you might have been here at the beginning when I was introducing that as well. I had mentioned I recognized the name. Um, I didn't remember it was from Yoko City Fire Rush, which was also a fun game. And yeah, we found the, <laughs> did did find the baby, <laughs> um, the Yoko City doll. I didn't recognize it there. That's right. I guess because of also the theme. It didn't seem super out of place or anything. It seems totally in theme here. But um, I like that. Good good connection. Thanks for mentioning it. Um, <laughs> good good point to bring up. And also, yeah, remind me that that's where it came from. Uh, so, yeah, excellent job this year again, too. Uh, last year's was fun, too. Um, but before I continue, I guess I'm going to pick this. I don't want to leave myself on a menu in the middle of this. Um, so... Let's see, we've got increased halberd range by one. That sounds very cool. Oh, there's also a set bonus, plus two. Oh, wow. That sounds pretty cool. I, mean, I guess you don't normally line up necessarily like that, but it's, you don't line up three enemies, but sometimes you have two at range, you know, like the second and third position. Or you can even hit someone three spaces away if you have to. Uh, reduces the cooldown of halberd by two. That's also good. Ooh, both of these are good. And inflicts shock on all enemies you dash through. Um, could be useful. Um, I can see that being pretty useful as well. Yeah. Now, now that there's more and more enemies, some of these abilities become, you know, start to come, come into their own. Uh, I kind of want to heal. I also kind of don't. I prefer. I wish I could get both of these. If I hadn't been hit, I would take both of these for sure. Absolutely. Um, this is actually a tough uh, decision. Would you want an extra range or cooldown by two? Both of these are quite good. Also, this one has a set bonus, which I guess kind of works. Wait a minute. Also, the set bonus. Wait a minute. If you're plus one and the set bonus is plus two, doesn't the other one give you a plus one? Doesn't that give you like a plus four or no? The other one must do something else. The set bonus, dragon, halberd, accessory, the handle. Okay, yeah, the other one is a different, a different halberd accessory, not a handle. So the other one would increase something else. In fact, is this something I have? I don't actually remember <laughs> the names of the ones I have. I guess it wasn't, because I don't remember having a, another thing that I had. needs a set. I didn't, wasn't paying attention to the list of items and possibilities. So, 
And it's actually a tough call. I really like the cooldown. We're starting to need more cooldowns, especially if we get hit by that Mr. Negative Cooldown guy. That guy's annoying. Uh, tough call. I think I'm going to go for cooldown on that. They're both good, but... And then it's a tough decision whether or not to rest. I'm going to maybe start taking more damage here. Eight is pushing it, but I think I'm going to push it for one more floor and leave my gem. Just the only reason for that, I guess, is because if we come out with the next one with three gems and I'm still at eight health or nine health even, then we can get, uh, I'd be at nine health possibly at that case. Then I could get two items from that, which sounds good. Still trying to wait for that and manage to get hit accidentally, but I think not getting hit is going to be harder and harder to avoid um, in the future. It seems like a really good thing you need to do for the half first half of your run is definitely not get hit because it's fairly easy to do in those points and it gives you an extra gem. All right, so I'm going to go back to the battlefield and here is our new battlefield where I will continue on my own later on as long as that doesn't break somehow. And if it does, then I'll probably start over because it's fun. <laughs> so, um... Yeah, that'll be it for today's 70 year old stream where we visited even more 70 year olds than usual. And uh, gotta go and uh, <clears throat> do other stuff. I haven't had lunch yet, it's afternoon already. So thanks uh, to Renton for showing up for the stream as well. I'm glad we had, had more devs on stream today to join us in playing their games and able to give direct feedback and get some more extra input on the games. So thanks for that. Uh, see everyone next week. <laughs>